Chapter 3941 Crown Prince Long Chen truly jumped in shock. Because Yu Qingxuan possessed a top ten heavenly flame, the ninth rank heavenly rainbow flame, she was incredibly powerful. With it, even against the likes of Xiang, Jai Wu Ming, the Nine Underworld Yuacha, and others, she could hold her ground. However, in the Vermilion Bird Empire, no, not even within the entire Vermilion Bird Empire, but merely among the princes and princesses, she only ranked ninth. This revelation was truly astonishing. As if enjoying Long Chen's expression, Xiao Yang laughed. Are you shocked? I truly am. I have a great understanding of Princess King Shuin's power. As I am not even a match for her, it seems I can only look up to those top nine ranks, said Long Chen humbly. This humbleness actually made Xiao Yang feel a bit bad. He thought that Long Chen had received a blow to his confidence, so he hastily said, Brother Long Chen, don't undervalue yourself. For you to be able to challenge an entire city's experts on your own and make the 17th Prince of the Heavenly Ruler Seal Empire beg for mercy, you are definitely a dragon amongst men, a one in 10,000 existence. However, when it came to the top nine and what powerful abilities they had, Xiao Yang didn't say a word. It seemed that he still had some misgivings toward Long Chen. After chatting a bit more, Long Chen got up and Xiao Yang personally sent him off. He even gave Long Chen a travel permit jade token as his ticket in. In the future, Long Chen wouldn't have to deal with so many questions at the city gate. Once Long Chen left, Xiao Yang immediately summoned his personal assistant and gave him orders to report Long Chen's image to the higher ups. After all, he needed to alert the higher-ups when a strong expert entered the empire. If Long Chen had bad intentions, then he would have to take the consequences for letting him through. But by reporting it, he wouldn't take all the blame. As Long Chen left the city, he looked at the jade token in his hand with a smile. This Sayo Yang really is interesting. This jade has a tracking rune inside of it. Is he looking down on me? Long Chen directly tossed the jade token away. Although there was nothing wrong with Xiao Yang's actions, it did make Long Chen feel unpleasant. As a result, Long Chen didn't even consider using the transportation formation. He directly summoned his Kanpeng wings and shot away. As Long Chen soared through the air with monstrous speed, the twisting and warping void created a sensation as if he was using a space-time channel. Also, long periods of continuous flight had let him become accustomed to this new speed of his. Over time, the rumbling of his wings and the astral winds they generated gradually subsided. As the resistance lessened, Long Chen's speed steadily increased, allowing him to propel forward with even greater velocity. It was precisely because Long Chen had been focused on gaining greater control over his wings that the distraction caused him to charge into the heavenly ruler, Seal Empire, by accident. Long Chen was now flying steadily and quickly, no longer subjected to the harsh astral winds at once slashed against his face, making it impossible for him to even open his eyes. Also, he no longer needed to use his dragon blood to protect his body anymore. In the beginning, he had been so unused to his speed, resulting in him crashing into several mountains. Such a high-speed impact wasn't something that he could endure without the protection of his dragon blood. As he was accustomed to his speed, his divine sense could now be spread around him, allowing him to see everything in his surroundings. He was no longer flying blind. This is just the basic speed of the Kunpeng Void Breaker, still quite a distance away from passing through the void silently. The Kunpeng race's divine abilities truly are amazing. Looking at the twisting space as his body rapidly passed through, Long Chen couldn't help praising the Kunpeng race. Long Chen quickly arrived at a city. Originally, he had not been planning on stopping, but when his divine sense swept through, he sensed a Huayan auction house inside the city. 
Hence, he immediately took a break there. When he revealed his status plate in the auction house, he was immediately given a warm welcome. Long Chen then asked the Huayan Trading Company about the Vermilion Bird Empire's current situation. After listening for a bit, he learned that the Vermilion Bird Empire was shockingly powerful. The emperor and his two empresses were actually earth venerates that had condensed three flowers. Also, the Vermilion Bird Empire's populace was thriving, with countless experts rising each year. The royal family alone had eighteen double supreme heavenly geniuses, and every single one of them was a terrifying monster. This time, when various treasure lands opened throughout the nine heavens, each royal descendant of the Vermilion Bird Empire took charge of leading a group of disciples into the secret realms. Among them, the Pill Fairy led her group into the three thousand worlds. However, as she was not a double supreme, the group that she led was comparatively a bit weaker. It was said that this time, every group had profited immensely from the treasure lands. The royal descendants, in particular, had not only managed to merge the powers of both supremes, but also acquired plenty of priceless treasures. After undergoing a great transformation, these heavenly geniuses skyrocketed in power. Although Yu Qingxuan was ranked ninth among the royal princes and princesses, the ranking was determined before the treasure lands opened. Also, it was rumored that when the princes and princesses exchanged pointers, the emperor showed favoritism toward Yu Qingxuan. Otherwise, with Yu Qingxuan's power, it would have been very difficult for her to secure a spot within the top ten. Yu Qingxuan had been separated from her father and mother since her birth, and the circumstances surrounding their separation remained shrouded in mystery. But upon her return, she was very obedient and didn't even blame her parents at all, which actually made them feel even guiltier. Thus, they intentionally gave her favorable treatment, allowing her to secure a place within the top ten with relative ease in read. Come even so, while Yu Qingxuan's power wasn't great amongst the royal descendants, they had tested her blood and found that she possessed the purest GLI bloodline among them. From this, they knew that her potential was limitless. Within the Vermilion Bird Empire, the competition between the princes and princesses was extremely intense. They had to constantly display their power and intelligence to prove that they deserved the position of emperor. On the other hand, Yu Qingxuan had no interest in acquiring this position and preferred a peaceful life. But because she was favored, quite a few princes and princesses were wary of her. In fact, none of the princes and princesses had a good relationship with her. After hearing that, Long Chen sneered disdainfully as expected, royal families are always emotionless. They birth a group of children and then raise them like poison insects, having them fight each other until only one king remains. Long Chen very much detested this style of education. Whether it was the Phoenix Cry Empire, the Grand Zion Nation, or even after sending to the immortal world, all the royal families that he had encountered were the same. There were no familial ties to speak of. I have to bring King Shuan away. Leaving her in this broken family won't let her feel any warmth, decided Long Chen firmly. Thinking of how obedient and reserved Yu King Shuan was, she was definitely being bullied in this place. After coming to this conclusion, Long Chen directly said goodbye to the Huayan Trading Company's people. But before leading, he received a status plate from the Huayan Trading Company. With it, he could freely use the Empire's transportation formations. Long Chen couldn't be bothered to ask any more questions after learning about this. After all, he didn't care about the Vermilion Bird Empire and only wanted to bring Yu Qingxuan away from this quarrel someplace. With the Huayan Trading Company's status plate, everything was easier. The Huayan Trading Company had a high status in the Vermilion Bird Empire, so no one questioned Long Chen. He didn't even have to line up for the transportation formation and was allowed priority usage. 
as the transportation formation lit up long chen appeared right outside the capital vermilion bird city however he barely had a chance to take in the sight of the majestic ancient city before an irritating noise reached his ears interrupting his momentary peace the crown prince is coming idlers get out of the way following that someone rudely pushed long chen back causing him to frown however as he didn't want to cause trouble he retreated to avoid that person's hand scram further long chen swiftly dodged his hand but it seemed that this person didn't feel like long chen had retreated far enough without hesitation he extended his hand once again making another forceful attempt to push long chen upon seeing this long chen's anger instantly flared and he slapped that person in the face chapter three thousand nine hundred forty two philosopher long chen sent that person flying through the air fortunately the current him had enough control over his power otherwise this slap would have blown that person apart even so this slap still caused a lot of people to gasp dozens of experts were opening a path making a ruckus so everyone's attention was drawn to this scene courting death those dozens of experts furiously surrounded long chen seeming like they were going to beat him up stout suddenly a golden robed man with a crown on his head appeared looking to be in his late twenties his countenance was graced with neatly trimmed facial hair and his piercing eyes emitted a captivating electric gleam as if possessing the ability to peer into the depths of one's soul he appeared unquestionably dignified when this man showed up those experts around long chen immediately stood at attention moving to the side at this moment long chen could see a group of experts in silver robes standing beside this man there were men and women among them and all of them had powerful auras surpassing most supremes they were definitely true experts when they looked at long chen they couldn't help but show a trace of shock on their faces seeming to be able to sense long chen's powerful blood kai fluctuations long chen had been refining the ancestral dragon essence blood for quite some time now so its power was mostly under his control yet despite his progress he had not reached absolute control over every trace of it thus some of its aura still leaked out perhaps ordinary experts were unable to sense that trace but these supreme heavenly geniuses instantly sensed it seeing a new face here they were all startled at this moment that dignified man walked over to long chen his aura was fully reserved without a trace of it leaking a sign that his power had been condensed to the pinnacle upon sensing this long chen's heart shook this person possessed extraordinary power exuding a pressure that rivaled that of long ayashin or kun tu long chen hadn't expected to encounter such an expert as soon as he reached the capital so long chen carefully examined him feeling that this expert's true age was around forty to fifty years old his cultivation base was so solid that it was most likely the result of constantly suppressing it despite also being in the immortal king realm his aura had reached the realm of going from solid to empty without the sharp senses from the nine star hegemon body art long chen might have misjudged his power the dignified man also looked at long chen with a trace of astonishment he coldly said is this your first time in the vermilion bird empire long chen frowned although this man's words couldn't count as rude he gave off such a haughty feeling that this simple question sounded like an interrogation is there a problem demanded long chen brazen one of the supreme experts beside the dignified man shouted blind fellow do you know who this person is as long as he isn't the current emperor of the vermilion bird empire he isn't qualified to act big in front of me other than that my temper isn't good so don't provoke me responded long chen coldly shameful you dare to mention the emperor pao 
Long Chen directly slapped this person in the midst of his response, causing him to let out a grunt as half of his face was turned to pulp. The moment Long Chen attacked, the dignified man also reached out to grab Long Chen's wrist. However, he didn't get to grasp anything. Long Chen had swiftly slapped that man and pulled his hand back. Now, the dignified man's expression sank. Long Chen had actually slapped his subordinate right in front of him, and he hadn't been able to stop him. That was a huge provocation to him. Report your name, he shouted furiously. It was quite clear that after Long Chen said his name, this man would immediately challenge Long Chen to a fight. The surrounding people instantly tensed, staring in shock at Long Chen. They didn't know where this black-robed man got the guts to dare to cause trouble here. Long Chen shook his head. Just what was going on? He was only looking for one person, but he hadn't even entered the city, and some trouble already found him. Long Chen was about to say his name when the sound of stone wheels rolling across the ground drew everyone's attention. After that, a donkey pulling a worn-out carriage slowly came over. The one driving the carriage was a boy in his early teens. What was curious, though, was that this boy didn't even look at the surrounding people. He just directly had the donkey drive right through. When the crowd saw that carriage, they actually parted before it, not daring to stop it. As for the young boy, he didn't cultivate at all. He was just an ordinary person. Upon seeing this carriage, the dignified man's expression grew slightly ugly. After a moment of hesitation, he also moved out of the way. As a result, that donkey pulled the carriage right past that dignified man and long chin. Martial artists really are competitive. They'll fight for fame and profit without even knowing why they are fighting. Even as blood dyes the land, as your bones fill the wilderness, you still fight delightedly without getting tired. Such a thing is the pinnacle of foolishness, the peak of idiocy. When the carriage passed by the two of them, a contemptuous old voice rang out from it, as if the speaker had absolute disdain for all the cultivators here. That old voice was lacking any power, a sign that he was just an ordinary person. Yet, he dared to criticize all the experts here. To Long Chen's surprise, the dignified man didn't reply to this criticism. However, although he didn't say anything, his expression was dark with fury. A toad at the bottom of a well cannot speak of the ocean. A summer bug cannot speak of winter. On the other hand, Long Chen directly retorted. His reply caused countless experts to gasp. Within their shock was also a touch of admiration in Reed. Comet had to be known that the elder inside the carriage had a shocking status, and not a single person here dared to argue with him. All of a sudden, the boy pulled on the reins, causing the donkey to stop in the street. He then glared at Long Chen furiously. Foolish brute! A vulgar person who only knows how to use brute force to solve problems dares to argue with a philosopher. A philosopher? What kind of trash is that? Long Chen had never heard of this title before. But seeing a young boy dare to look down on him, he was immediately pissed. He disdainfully said, foolish brute, the road is for all people. Just because a dumb beast comes over, why do others have to open the way for it? The dumb beast was naturally the donkey, but there was also an implicit curse toward the schoolboy and the elder in the carriage. You, what you, don't you know matters? If you do, why would you stop your carriage in the middle of the road and block the pedestrians? Now you even have the nerve to criticize others. That's like someone covered in fur saying others look like monkeys. Can you have some shame? How brazen! You dare to be rude to a philosopher. Capture him. Chapter 3943 Meeting An old friend in a foreign land, however. No one even moved after the boy shouted. The dignified man and the others didn't pay him any attention. In fact... None of the surrounding experts even looked at the boy. In an instant, 
The boy's expression grew ugly with embarrassment. He was enraged, but he was unable to direct the surrounding experts. Zeuer, that's enough. Don't lower yourself to the level of vulgar people. We still have to see the emperor. After all, stoneheads won't change their minds. Rotting wood cannot be carved, said the elder inside the carriage. After the elder said that, the boy pointed at Long Chen. The world is filled with opportunities for learning and encompasses a wide array of paths, not limited solely to the martial arts. Only ignorant people like you would lack respect toward others in their hearts. The boy then urged the donkey on, leaving Long Chen feeling enraged. However, seeing that it was just a child, Long Chen held himself back. Otherwise, he'd have long since slapped this boy and taught him what respect was. I'll leave today's matter as it is. But next time, I, Zhu Yunwen, will personally experience your skills to see what makes you dare to be so arrogant, said the dignified man coldly. I am arrogant? Aha, interesting. Were you raised by that old thing? Even when covered in fur, do you see others as monkeys? Who could be more arrogant than you? But you need others to clear the way for you just to walk through the streets. Do you refuse to walk in a crowded street? Why must people get out of the way so you can show off your grandeur? I heard that you are some crown prince, huh? Hee hee, someone with your conduct. There's no way you can ever be a decent crown prince in your lifetime, said Long Chen indifferently. Just who are you? raged Chu Yunwen. Who I am isn't important. You will learn who I am very soon. Don't worry, I won't be leaving the Vermilion Bird Empire in the short term. I trust that it won't be long before we meet again. Long Chen ignored the crown prince and walked deeper into the city. While Long Chen displayed indifference on the surface, he was actually grumbling angrily inside. However, he was also a bit confused. This crown prince was not surnamed Yu, not having the same surname as Yu Qingxuan. Just what was going on? Entering the city normally required registration. However, after this disturbance, no one dared to stop Long Chen, afraid that he would also slap them. Thus, they just let him through. Crown Prince, should I send someone to follow him and investigate his background? Asked one of the supreme experts by Zhu Yunwen's side. Zhu Yunwen shook his head. No need. This guy seems like an expert that disdains to lie the most. If he says that we'll be meeting again soon, we definitely will. Everything will become clear next time. True. He really has the guts to publicly criticize Philosopher Sun. Hee hee, that was satisfying. I almost cheered him on, laughed a female expert. He isn't from the Vermilion Bird Empire, and so doesn't understand the philosopher's status. Just like the saying in Newborn, Calf isn't afraid of a tiger. He just doesn't know how big of a calamity he just provoked, said another expert. The Philosopher Institute really is loathsome. All they know how to do is fight using their tongues. They just argue and argue. It's annoying. The most hateful thing about them is their attitudes. They all act better than us. They don't even have much learning, yet their arrogance has ascended beyond the heavens. Even though they will all drop dead with a single slap, we have to endure them. Pay. When the Philosopher Institute was mentioned, they all started to complain because they disliked the Philosopher Institute. However, they were also powerless to do anything to them. As Long Chen entered the capital, he found that Vermilion Bird City was even larger than he had imagined. The city itself had five lakes, four mountains, nine creeks, and eighteen mountain streams. Moreover, Although the buildings looked disordered, in truth, they were built according to a special formation. From the sky, Vermilion Bird City looked just like a giant seal, and at the heart of the seal was a divine bird mark with flame-like designs around it. This divine bird was naturally the Vermilion Bird. The buildings themselves were very old. 
However, they gave off a lively feeling, as if full of youthful energy, akin to a bird spreading its wings and about to leap into flight. This formation is amazing. Furthermore, I'm only seeing the surface. Who knows what is hidden underground? If Zaya Chen was here, he would definitely be interested. Long Chen eyed the buildings. Even as an amateur who only knew a bit about formations, he could see that Vermilion Bird City was a terrifying grand formation. Its power would be unimaginable if it was activated. Inside the city, Long Chen found that the general atmosphere was very refined. There were many scholars walking around. Curiously, they had cold indifference toward the cultivators despite not being one. The contemptuous glint in their eyes suggested a profound disdain for those on the path of cultivation. Long Chen was very curious about that. The immortal world was one where martial might was respected, so why would the Vermilion Bird Empire care more about learning? He saw groups of three to five scholars all around, pointing at the rivers and mountains, discussing facts, having discussions, reciting poetry, or even singing. They seemed very carefree. They were in the tea houses and wine shops. Thus, Long Chen was particularly conspicuous as he walked through the streets in his black robes with a giant saber on his back. Some of those scholars even pointed at him behind his back with disdainful expressions. Long Chen smiled faintly, not feeling angry, who didn't know how to talk about people behind their backs. Also, who has never been talked about like this? Long Chen never cared about such a thing. On the other hand, he was quite interested in the Vermilion Bird Empire's history. He noticed that this place was filled with culture, and the roads were steeped in history. Even the small stores on the roads looked as if they had immense history behind them. The stores on the main path actually had nothing to do with cultivation, contrary to most cities. Here, it was like he was back in the mortal world's Phoenix Cry Empire, and this feeling actually made him feel sentimental. Sorry, people with weapons can't enter here. Long Chen was about to walk into a calligraphy store when he was stopped by the shopkeeper. The shopkeeper looked at him disdainfully, which made Long Chen's expression turn on. The Vermilion Bird Empire was truly interesting. A little shopkeeper actually dared to stop him. Long Chen smiled and didn't enter. From outside, he saw that while the shop was small, it actually had quite a few impressive wares. Artistically, they were very profound. Long Chen wanted to buy a few, but with the shopkeeper's attitude, he couldn't be bothered to. Anyway, there were plenty of other stores. Of course, there were some with better attitudes. When Long Chen saw some ornaments with beautiful craftsmanship, he wanted to buy some. But then, he learned that buying things in the Vermilion Bird Empire required him to use the Empire's currency. As a result, Long Chen was left dumbfounded. It was no wonder so many shopkeepers had directly driven him away. It seemed that they could tell that he had no money and couldn't be bothered to waste time on him. Suddenly, the sound of a zither rang out, and Long Chen heard someone crying out. It's starting, it's starting. The zither sect's fairies are starting to play music. In an instant, a sea of people charged toward the end of the street. Long Chen was then carried by the flow of the crowd and arrived at a giant plaza. The heart of the plaza was a mountain, with spring water flowing down from the peak. The babbling brooks caused a dense mist to flow down and cover the plaza in an air of mystery. In front of the mountain was a platform with eighteen beautiful women in white dresses. They were sitting and playing their zithers. Liao Yu Huang. When Long Chen saw one of them in particular, he was startled. He hadn't expected to meet someone he knew here. Chapter 3944, Invitation 18 Women, were seated atop the stage, looking as graceful as fairies. In this enchanting moment, their graceful thin fingers danced across their zithers, conjuring melodies that possessed the power to immerse one's very soul. 
this beautiful scene cleansed the eyes ears and soul in the distance long chin's vexations were forgotten wiped away without a trace and his soul entered a peaceful state it was an indescribable contentment the plaza was packed with people as the crowd eagerly gathered to witness the spectacle separated from them designated seats were arranged in front of the stage reserved exclusively for a certain group of experts long chen's discerning gaze then fell upon the mark of the vermilion bird on their sleeves having seen such marks on ju yunwen's robes he knew that it must be the mark of the royal family beside the imperial disciples there were also a group of young scholarly individuals seated nearby although they were not cultivators themselves they occupied the same area as the imperial disciples however a clear division was evident as neither group chose to intermingle or sit together each faction maintained its distinct space separate from the other other than the thousands of seats at the front the others could only watch from a distance at this moment the plaza already had hundreds of thousands of people packed inside of it but not a single person made any noise they all silently appreciated the beautiful zither music within the crowd long chen was it so tall that he stood out however his large sabre always drew some attention those scholars then looked at long chen disdainfully as if his equipment displeased them but they also didn't say anything ignoring those gazes long chen was appreciating the performance while observing the imperial disciples he neither saw the crown prince nor the figure that he had been hoping to see however he sensed several powerful auras among them akin to a calm sea concealing an ancient deep sea monster long chen couldn't help sighing emotionally the vermilion bird empire was truly a den of crouching tigers and hidden dragons long chen's attention then turned to liao yuhuang who was also a powerful expert today she was playing music with so many others and they had to be from the same sect as her in other words they were all from one of the four immemorial sects the zither sect suddenly a yellow-robed woman stepped forward and a burst of flute music appeared over the zither music causing the pitch of the music to gradually rise when the melody reached a fever pitch it suddenly came to a stop the zither music the flute music they all stopped however their echoes remained causing the people's souls to feel like they had been lifted beyond the clouds the feeling of floating didn't fade for a long time it was only after a long pause that the applause started once it began it was thunderous everyone was amazed as they had never heard such a beautiful yet soul-shaking song the final high note seemed to bring people above the dome of the heavens that impact and explosiveness gave them a rich aftertaste causing them to feel like they had seen an unprecedented world whether it was the cultivators or the ordinary people they formed a resonance with the music hence all of them clapped as if their lives were on the line after that the yellow-robed woman and the zither players stood and bowed to everyone when liao yu huang's gaze swept over the crowd her eyes suddenly brightened as she saw long chen within the crowd long chen nodded toward her although they didn't have much of a relationship liao yu huang had helped long chen in the nine prefecture convention and long chen had always remembered this favor liao yu huan suddenly whispered into the ear of the yellow robed woman who then looked at long chen a bit oddly and nodded liao yu huan gracefully ran down the stage lifting her robe to keep her from stepping over it her actions instantly drew everyone's attention furthermore seeing the yellow robed woman and the other women looking at long chen as if waiting for something everyone stared at him they found that no one recognized this black robed man fairy yu huang it's been a long time you are as beautiful as ever and your music dao has once more advanced congratulations long chen greeted liao yu huang first brother long is too courteous in just a year 
Your blood kai has reached an astonishing height. You are soaring through the martial path. That is what's really worth congratulating. Liao Yuhuang returned his greeting with a smile. She seemed very happy to see him. If Brother Long doesn't mind, you can come sit with us. This invitation shocked countless people. The Zither sect's disciples were all fairies, revered as sacred symbols. They were so transcendent that it compelled others to maintain a great distance from them. Normal people could enjoy the music of the Zither sect's disciples, but not many of them dared to even speak to the fairies. Even the ones sitting at the front with special statuses did not dare to rashly open their mouths for fear of being rude. Consequently, Liao Yuhuang's enthusiastic invitation for Long Chen to join them left people astonished and filled with envy. Quite a few people began to whisper, guessing Long Chen's origins. No need. I was just in the vicinity and drawn over by your wondrous music. I'm glad I got to hear it, but I have to leave. Fairy Yu Huang, you don't need to waste your time on me. Seeing so many people staring at him, Long Chen instantly felt uncomfortable. He did not want to make a scene here. In particular, when those scholars glared at him with hostile gazes, Long Chen feared that his temper might erupt and he would end up killing them with a single slap. Brother Long, can you not do me the honor of your pointers? In the Nine Prefecture Convention, I didn't get a chance to ask for your advice on the music Tao. This time, I cannot miss the chance again. Liao Yuhuang actually grabbed Long Chen's hand and dragged him over to the stage, not giving him a chance to refuse. Long Chen was embarrassed as this gesture seemed excessively intimate. However, when he looked into Liao Yuhuang's eyes, he realized that her intentions were pure. This action was devoid of any romantic implications. It was purely to keep him here. Hence, Long Chen couldn't bring himself to be so rude as to throw her hand away. That would appear far too crude. Helplessly, he thickened his face and walked to the front. When he was in front of the stage, he found that all the seats were taken, and all of the people there stared at him frostily. The scholars in particular looked at him arrogantly, with no intention of giving up their spots. Brothers, if you don't mind, why don't we squeeze together a bit? Just as Liao Yuhuang was about to speak, a young man in the third row waved to Long Chen warmly. This young man seemed to be in his early twenties, and his face still had a trace of immaturity on it. Giving him the air of a grown-up boy, however, this young man was a terrifying supreme expert with a powerful aura. But even such a powerful existence still gave off a pure and innocent feeling as if he would never harm anyone. Then, many thanks. Long Chen cupped his fists and sat beside that person, sharing his seat. Liao Yuhuang was originally planning on having Long Chen sit in the front row as an expression of respect, but he didn't give her the chance. You are Long Chen? Suddenly, from the first row, a woman turned back and looked at Long Chen coldly, her voice full of hostility in read calm. Chapter 3945 Yu Kaiinksu, this woman sitting in front of him, was not at all shorter than the men. Once she stood up, she would probably be rather tall. Her beauty possessed a natural allure, yet it was accompanied by an icy arrogance reflected in her high nose and thin lips. From Long Chen's experience, this woman must be a thorny rose. He doubted that they would get along. On her forehead was the mark of a six-petal plum blossom, which seemed to contain boundless flame energy. The moment their eyes locked, it felt like that flower was also looking at Long Chin. After that, the plum blossom's flame energy swirled, as if it might lock onto Long Chen at any moment. This woman was a terrifying expert, one of the ones that Long Chen sensed at the very start when he arrived. She gave him a sense of heavy pressure. Long Chen didn't know what she wanted, so he indifferently said, Did you have any advice? The woman icily said, No advice. I heard about you in the Jilai Immortal Realm. 
I encountered a group of powerful wood cultivators inside and invited them to join me. But they said that they belonged to the Dragonblood Legion and couldn't join any other power. They were only loyal to their boss. So I asked them who their boss was, and they told me that it was Long Chen and even showed me an image of you to ask me if I knew you. Long Chen's heart pounded hard. A group of powerful wood cultivators that belonged to the Dragonblood Legion. Was that not the healing warriors of the Dragonblood Legion? Long Chen hastily asked, Where are they now? They were hunted down by the violet thunderclap empires Wang Tianhui and the GLI mortal realm. I saved them and forced Wang Tianhui away. Then many thanks. Long Chen immediately cupped his fists to her in gratitude. You don't need to thank me. They were a group of eighteen people, and three of them were heavily injured by Wing Tianhui. I invited them to join the Vermilion Bird Empire, but they refused, so there was no need for me to use a secret art to heal them. From how I saw it, the three of them didn't have much chance of survival, said the woman emotionlessly. Hearing that they were severely injured, Long Chen was enraged. He hadn't expected the Violet Thunderclap Empire to be causing trouble in other places as well. You can say that I am contemptible. Whether it was Wang Tianhui or myself, we only cared about their precious wood attribute talent. Wang Tianhui was using force, while I was softer. But while the methods were different, our goals were no different. The woman stared at Long Chen. Long Chen shook his head. No matter how you put it, you helped save my sisters. I will remember this favor. If I have a chance, I will repay you. Although this woman hadn't healed them, Long Chen didn't blame her. The healing warriors all had powerful self-recovery abilities. If they were so seriously injured, then, for this woman, to heal them would definitely come at a price. In a secret realm, there were countless dangers and opportunities. If they refused to join her side, then this woman naturally had no responsibility to take such risks for them. To tell the truth, I really don't like you. If it weren't for you, I would have a group of powerful wood cultivators under my wing. That would strengthen my side and give me a trump card in the fight for supremacy. This failure is your fault. The woman eyed Long Chen with a hint of anger. What kind of logic is that? Long Chen was dumbfounded. Whose line of thought would end up like that? Wasn't that completely unreasonable? This is my logic. Those wood cultivators were incredibly important to me. Something that I, Yu Kaingsu, have set my sights on won't be renounced so easily. So, what do you want? You want to hit me? Long Chen's guard instantly went up when he saw this woman's unfriendly expression. We will gamble on the martial stage. One fight to determine victory and defeat. If you lose, you and your Dragonblood Legion will fall under my camp, said Yu Kaingsu. Damn, what an appetite! Long Chen stared at her in disbelief. This beautiful and arrogant woman was quite greedy. He had so many brothers and sisters. If he lost, would they all have to listen to her in the future? Long Chen shook his head. Although this woman was powerful, she was definitely crazy. The way she viewed things and her way of thinking was completely ridiculous. She was beautiful, but it was a pity that she was an idiot. Long Chen was about to reply when the man who had given up his seat for Long Chen asked with great curiosity, What about if you lose? I won't lose. Yu Kaingsu spoke confidently with great decisiveness. You can't say anything for sure. What if you do lose? asked the man with a chortle. Yu Kaingsu coldly snorted. If I lose, I'll marry him, and everything I have will be his. This reply stunned everyone present. That was crazy, wasn't it? Was this a fight for marriage? It had to be known that this icy beauty was a princess of the Vermilion Bird Empire. Just how grand was her status? How could this one sentence decide her marriage? 
Inreed, calm people then looked from Yu Kaingsu to this handsome man in black robes, curiously guessing what background he had. Why had they never heard of such a person before? Furthermore, from Yu Kaingsu's words, she had never seen Long Chen either. She had only ever heard of him, not having much understanding of him. Wasn't it too crazy for her to gamble like this? The other imperial disciples were shocked by Yu Kaing Su's words and stared at her in disbelief. It had to be known that based on their understanding of her, she was incredibly arrogant. Even other princes and princesses were usually ignored by her. Thus, they were dumbfounded that she would suddenly act like this today. Were those eighteen wood cultivators really such amazing geniuses? Could they make Princess Yu Kaingsu not care about the face of the imperial family and gamble with Long Chen? You are a princess, asked Long Chen. Yes, you are speaking to the genuine Princess Kaingsu of the Vermilion Bird Empire, said the man beside Long Chen. He seemed excited just like a child and patted Long Chen's shoulder with encouragement. He he, brother, your chance has come. Gamble, and a small knife can become a battle axe, a small spoon can become a giant walk. Only then did Long Chen come to realize that even the people in the third row must have extraordinary statuses. To dare say such a thing to a princess, perhaps they were all on the same level as princes and princesses. This is fair, no. You lose, and everything you have is mine. I lose, and everything I have is yours. Do you dare to fight? Yu Kaingsu looked at Long Chen. As for Liao Yu Huang and the others on the stage, they were originally going to keep playing, but they stopped because of Yu Kaingsu, seeming very interested in their gamble. What kind of dramatic nonsense was this? Long Chen was speechless. He had come to marry a princess, yes, but it wasn't this madwoman. Sorry, I'm not interested in this gamble. I feel like I shouldn't be sitting here, so I won't disturb you all any longer. Long Chen rose to leave. Brother Long, please wait. Just then, the yellow-robed woman with the flute spoke. Chapter 3946 Even a tiger does not eat their cub junior apprentice. Sister Yu Huang says that Brother Long is skilled in music, so I sincerely wish Brother Long would give me some pointers. I have been at a bottleneck for several months without the slightest progress. Please help me, Brother Long. The yellow-robed woman respectfully bowed to Long Chen. Her words shocked the experts present, and they stared at Long Chen in disbelief. This person was skilled in music. Fairy is joking. My skill in music is only superficial. How could I dare to be so arrogant as to give you pointers? I would make a fool of myself, and, in the worst case, it would even cause you to go on the wrong path, said Long Chen with a bitter smile in read. Come, although he had read some books on music theory and had some understanding of music, which was enough to con amateurs, his skill was just on that level. Moreover, this yellow-robed woman came from the zither sect, the highest institute of learning for the music Tao. For Long Chen, to give musical pointers to such an existence was a joke. HMPH, a martial fighter, only knows how to swing their blade, and their hands are soaked in blood. What do they know about the profundity of music? At this moment, a pale-faced scholar in the front row snorted rudely. Long Chen looked over and saw a man in his twenties. The man had a fair, smooth complexion, devoid of facial hair, and his cheeks carried a slight plumpness. However, what stood out the most was the unmistakable aura of arrogance emanating from him. When Long Chen looked at him, he didn't even look back at Long Chen. Instead, he casually took a sip of his tea, seemingly disdaining to even look at Long Chen. A martial fighter? Without fighters, you would have no soldiers guarding and protecting the people. Then could you still eat until your cheeks became so fat? Asked Long Chen disdainfully. Countless people almost laughed at that description. 
it was truly apt h m p h what a joke if there was love in this world there would be no borders if there was righteousness there would be no boundaries if everyone could give up fighting and focus on learning discussing things with reason etiquette and laws everything would follow the natural tao then why would we need soldiers to fight without the calamity that soldiers and blades bring why establish territories with no territories there would be no fighting people would not die to senseless violence you say soldiers guard the people but are they not really there to invade other nations an excuse to constantly expand one's territory sneered the scholar brother listen to my advice don't bother with people like him those people don't have any skills other than talking in that regard we aren't a match for them warned the imperial disciple beside long chen kindly he was profoundly aware of just how sharp these scholars tongues were furthermore the vermilion bird empire's ancestral teachings had explicit rules that the vermilion bird empire had to maintain a thriving culture of both learning and martial power as a result even though these scholars weren't powerful their statuses were very high even imperial disciples didn't dare to be rude to them they couldn't hit the scholars and were incapable of beating them verbally thus all the vermilion bird empire's cultivators detested these scholars but there was nothing that they could do they did not dare to break the laws of the vermilion bird empire surprisingly this young man was quite kind to advise long chen to ignore them he didn't want long chen to embarrass himself these scholars would take a bite out of people if they were ignored but if they weren't ignored they would not let their opponents off after all talking reason was their strong suit they often crossed verbal swords amongst themselves training themselves in this regard in this case arguing with them was like using one's weak point against someone's strong point in fact throughout history who knew just how many cultivators had been enraged to death by their quibbling a bunch of brainless trolls why would i be afraid of them i refuse to believe that just with their mouths they can erase all the merit and contributions that the soldiers on the border of the vermilion bird empire have done they are brave warriors who are not afraid of sacrificing themselves in order to protect their families and the commoners they are the iron wall that protects the people of the vermilion bird empire from the storm while you sit here enjoying music and drinking tea being so bored that you have nothing better to do than curse others they are hanging heads on their belts prepared to enter a bloody battle against enemies at any moment and ready to spill their own blood for their beloved such fearless heroes the protectors of the empire are turned into worthless brutes by your mouth it seems that i do not have enough learning please clear up this confusion for me said long chen disdainfully at those arrogant scholars although his words were that of someone asking for advice his expression was clearly telling them that if they wanted a debate he would give them one long chen's words received a thunderous cheer as he was speaking up for all the cultivators in the vermilion bird empire on the other hand the scholars were frosty faced even so that slightly pudgy-faced scholar wasn't bothered by all the clapping he fearlessly sneered you only know how to use fists not reason in the end martial power is unable to solve problems violence only brings about more violence and even more hatred in a never-ending cycle is history not clear enough only by resolving the hatred between both sides can a war end without war people will not need to bleed and sacrifice themselves but cultivators are all fond of war delighting in stripping away other people's lives for personal gain the heavenly Tao's dislike such things but you aren't even aware of it yourselves it is the pinnacle of foolishness the pinnacle of foolishness are you talking about yourself you might be able to talk reason with a person but what about a wild beast if there was a tiger in front of you would you talk reason with it would it talk reason with you asked long chen disdainfully 
Why would a person talk reason with an animal? I naturally have my own ways to deal with wild animals, said the scholar coldly, but he didn't say what those methods were. All the experts here could tell that he had no better argument against Long Chen's point. For Long Chen to be able to make one of the sharp-tongued scholars powerless to counterattack, this achievement startled the experts present. This man did have some skill in this regard. You have ways. What ways could you possibly have? Wouldn't you just directly kneel and cry out, Daddy? asked Long Chen. The scholar furiously retorted, You are making personal attacks. Debate should be about the actual subject matter. To resort to personal attacks is the lowest kind of conduct. Long Chen shook his head. No, we are talking reason here. This isn't a personal attack. Have you not heard of the expression, Even a tiger doesn't eat their own cub you? The scholar was enraged. While Long Chen's words were a bit vulgar, they were somewhat reasonable, causing the scholar to not be able to grasp a point to counterattack. However, after thinking about it, the scholar suddenly felt that something was wrong. If he knelt and called out Daddy, wouldn't he be saying that he was a wild beast? Long Chen was clearly cursing him in a roundabout manner. Wasn't that precisely a personal attack? Quite a few smart cultivators had long since heard the other meaning in Long Chen's words. The Zither sect's disciples in particular were hiding their smiles. Who do you think you are to dare to challenge me, a Hallen degree holder, to a debate? Chapter 3947 Helping a Dog Eat Crap The Vermilion Bird Empire boasted the Philosopher Institute as its highest institute of learning, serving as a pinnacle of intellect pursuit. Within the institute, the disciples were categorized into different ranks based on their academic achievement and dedication. The initial two ranks were attainable through completing some examinations. However, formal scholars needed to seek out and establish a mentor-disciple relationship with a master from within the institute. Only by gaining the trust and willingness of a master would they be considered official members of the Philosopher Institute. It was a bit similar to the inheritances of the Marshall Path, but not quite the same. Within the Philosopher Institute, every master had their own specialties. After formally accepting a master, there were three degrees to gain through one's studies, and each degree came with its own rank. But above these three degrees was the highest level of learning, the Hanlin degree. Those who passed the Hanlin exams were considered Hanlin scholars. Hanlin scholars were of such high status that they were seated on the same level as princes and princesses. As for the actual philosophers of the Philosopher Institute, their status was even higher. When meeting the emperor, they didn't even need to count out. A Hanlin scholar possessed such learning that countless students looked up to them, and this pudgy scholar before Long Chen was exactly a new Hanlin scholar that was just promoted this year. He was barely thirty years old, but had gained such a noble academic degree. Thus, it could be said that he had reached the peak of his life, having a limitless future before him. Wherever he went, he would be followed by a crowd, being the center of attention. He really liked this feeling. It was as if this was his essence of existence. However, today he felt very unnatural. As the Zither sect's disciples were playing, he was seated with many others and could no longer find that feeling of being a crane amongst birds. In fact, from the start, he hadn't even had a chance to show off at all. The Zither sect's beautiful women didn't even look at him. The Zither sect's disciples were all like heavenly fairies. Most importantly, they possessed a grand air about them. They were rather aloof, but that wasn't targeted toward him. So while he wasn't happy about it, he could accept it. However, when Liao Yu Huang grabbed Long Chen's hand in front of so many people, that set countless hearts ablaze with jealousy. For someone as arrogant as this scholar, it was unbearable. He was looking down on cultivators, viewing them as coarse people who could only use their fists with mouths dumber than feet. But unexpectedly, Long Chen was able to infuriate him with just a few words. 
with his fury set ablaze. His head was no longer so nimble, so he was unable to find words to counterattack. The more he tried to think of something, the more blank his head became. In his panic, he directly stood and pointed at Long Chen, shouting, Who do you think you are? What qualifications do you have to debate with a Hanlin scholar like myself? This furious display caused countless people to look at him oddly. Was this really a Hanlin scholar? Why was he cursing like an uncouth fellow then? Long Chen's lips curled. He shook his head. I wonder, was your Hanlin degree obtained through some certain means that cannot see the light of day? How are you so lacking? Seeing myself stand out and discuss music theory with the fairies of the zither sect, you are so jealous that you wish to discuss how crude martial arts are. Then when I want to discuss that with you, you instead switch to wanting to talk reason. Then when I try to talk reason with you, you talk about status and position. What? Does talking require qualifications? After cursing, the scholar's turbulent mind gradually cleared, and he realized the folly of his outburst. It was only due to his jealousy that he had said such an incoherent thing. However, regretting it was useless now. Since he had said it, he couldn't take it back. He thickened his face and said, of course. The Vermilion Bird Empire's emperor is a noble existence. Can any random person be qualified to speak to his majesty? Now that he had gotten here, if he were to admit that he had misspoken, that would be a slap in his own face. Hence, he naturally refused to admit he had made a mistake. Other than that, he also wanted to test Long Chen's foundation. If he had a chance, he would turn things around. That really is interesting. Didn't you say that martial force was unable to resolve problems, and that people needed to talk reason? Now you throw out something about status. In other words, if my status was lower than yours, I wouldn't even be qualified to speak to you. Then how would we talk reason? Asked Long Chen lightly. I. The scholar was instantly dumbfounded. He had dug a hole, and then jumped into it himself. Thus, talking reason is something limited. It can only be done when there are binding forces between sides that are equally matched in power. For example, you are only able to act so arrogantly under the protection of the Vermilion Bird Empire's imperial laws. If you were to leave the empire, then considering your lack of power and arrogance, I guarantee that you wouldn't lie for longer than a day, continued Long Chen. What kind of dodge it was this Hamlin scholar? He lacked any ability and still dared to act like a big shot. Could it be that he was a fake? You are spouting nonsense. Your reasoning is completely fallacious. Within the laws of heaven and earth, within the Tao of all things, when all spirits respect each other, there would no longer be differences between weaker or stronger, raged the scholar. Long Chen slowly extended his hand and lazily said, I can't be bothered to move. Can you bring your face here and hit it against my hand? Thank you for your cooperation. As a result, a burst of booming laughter rang out. One reason was because Long Chen's way of speaking was interesting. But the other reason was because the scholar had truly slapped himself in the face. After Long Chen had grasped the opening in his words, this scholar should have never continued sticking to that argument. The more he did, the more holes appeared in his argument. This person was truly foolish. Long Chen could no longer be bothered to even argue with him. After grabbing the opening the scholar reveals, he was completely crushed. Everyone's laughter instantly made the scholar realize that he had slapped himself in the face once again. Now, there was nothing he could do to get out of this predicament. His face twitched with fury, but he didn't know what to do, causing him to sweat a lot. That miserable appearance of his was extremely satisfactory to the cultivators. Thus, they felt great admiration for Long Chen. His words didn't have anything sophisticated to them, but he was able to leave the other side speechless and unable to retaliate. 
a frog at the bottom of a well cannot speak of the sea a summer bug cannot speak of winter your hands are soaked in blood and it's unknown just how many life forms you've killed what qualifications do you have to talk reason with us another scholar stood up and challenged long chen this person was helping the first scholar out of his predicament after all which cultivator could avoid killing others this person's words were sharp and struck right at the source of the problem oh so someone's coming out to help the dog eat crap do you want to argue all right then boss long san will have a nice chat with you today at this moment long chen threw caution to the wind no longer planning on being low-key in the vermilion bird empire so they wanted to play he would gladly accompany them as a result long chen directly jumped onto the stage and took out the chair of a grand master making a show of sitting on it arrogantly looking down at the scholars below the stage he said i can see now i'm not suited to being low-key fine i won't make any plans for my marriage i'll just charge in with my eyes closed let's see who's afraid of who later chapter three thousand nine hundred forty eight wear morning clothes long chen was extremely irritated by these mouth sprayers he had wanted to be low-key first seeing the situation in the vermilion bird empire before thinking of how he was going to propose he had thought that he had to know the other side first before he could be sure of victory however now that he was being targeted by these brainless scholars his fury instantly surged as a result he no longer cared about being low-key and what not he directly sat on the stage and challenged those fellows a frog at the bottom of a well cannot speak of the sea a summer bug cannot speak of winter you say that my hands are soaked in blood then what about the chickens ducks and fish that you eat are you not soaked in blood as well in read calm sorry but i'm a vegetarian i don't touch meat or fish sneered the scholar seemingly prepared for such an argument so a vegetarian doesn't kill why don't you look at the bottom of your shoe retorted long chen that person was startled seeing everyone look at him he sneered i don't know what you're talking about however he still lifted his foot this shoe was completely clean the bottom so glossy without the slightest imperfection the vermilion bird city was so clean to the point of being untouched by dust and did you want to buy my shoe sorry but these shoes are for scholars only you'll never wear them in this lifetime mocked the scholar idiot is a pair of shoes enough to make you ascend to the heavens i was talking about your other shoe said long chen indifferently the scholar then raised his other foot the bottom of this shoe was as glossy as the last but there were some black spots on it looking more closely everyone saw that the black spots were tiny ants that had been stepped to death their corpses were stuck to the bottom of his shoe so tell me are you soaked in blood now asked long chen you this was only an accident raged the scholar an accident oh so you can take lives if it's an accident didn't that other fellow say that when all life forms are equal we can talk reason well ants are also life forms and they also have families they have aunts and uncles and perhaps those with high status and wealth even have multiple wives perhaps if they work hard they can even have a hundred children a thousand grandchildren as for you you killed one with your foot and waved it off as an accident do you know how much pain you've caused their father their mother and their children if you really want to talk reason you should take responsibility a life for a life atone for your sins with your death in front of everyone otherwise where is the justice if you don't even follow your own principles who would listen to you talk reason demanded long chen you the scholar was ashen with rage he had only stepped on some ants but this guy wanted him to repay it with his life 
Was this guy mentally ill? What you? Do you want to talk reason or not? I'm talking reason with you from the viewpoint of the apps. So why aren't you talking? demanded Long Chen. The cultivators all smiled, feeling Long Chen to be quite interesting. It was rare for a cultivator to have such a slippery mouth. Seeing the scholars looking sour, they felt as refreshed as if they were drinking iced mead on a hot summer day. An ant can't talk, so why talk reason to it? shouted another scholar. What did you say? Long Chen pretended not to hear. An ant can't talk, so why talk reason to it? said the scholar more loudly. What did you say? An ant can't talk, so why talk reason to it? This time the scholar roared it. What did you say? I said that an ant can't talk, so why? The scholar shouted as loudly as he could. But because he wasn't a cultivator, he lost his voice midway. I can't hear what you're saying, so that means that I don't need to talk reason with you, right? You didn't hear the screams of the ants before their death, so you don't have to talk reason to the ants. Since you say that you can't hear the ants, I can just say that I can't hear you. The principle is the same. To put it frankly, it's just a matter of covering your ears and seeing who is more shameless. Don't act so superior. Looking at your arrogant expressions makes me want to slap you in the face, if for nothing else than to feel good. Long Chen shrugged indifferently. His appearance was even more arrogant than the scholars. Long Chen's words were a bit rascally, but the logic was there. Just like that, Long Chen continued to con them. Without getting past this con, they didn't even need to think about talking reason. Having me pay with my life is completely illogical. You've killed so many life forms, so what right do you have to criticize me? Raged the scholar. I'm not the one criticizing you. These are your own criticisms. I've killed life forms, and you've killed life forms. Although the quantity is vastly different, talking philosophically, there is no difference. Are you not a pot calling the kettle black? asked Long Chen. All the scholars present had ugly expressions. Long Chen was too sinister. Without resolving this matter, he refused to further debate anything. Now, all the scholars had lost face. Then, according to you, how can such matters be resolved? demanded the scholar, who had stepped on the ants, throwing the problem back at Long Chen. Long Chen smiled. I'm also someone who likes talking reason. Paying with your life really does seem a bit overboard. However, if you were to put away its corpse properly and kowtow three times, then wear mourning clothes beside the coffin for seven seven-day periods, it should be about right. If you agree, we can set this matter aside and keep debating. The, the scholar was enraged. According to the Empire's standards, only when close family passed away would someone wear mourning clothes beside the coffin. Furthermore, most family would only be watched over for seven days. Watching over it for forty-nine days was a treatment fit only for your own father or mother. After the forty-nine days were over, the children would observe mourning for three years. Although Long Chen didn't request for him to observe mourning for three years, to stand by the ant's coffin for forty-nine days was equivalent to treating the ants as solemnly as his own father and mother. That was no different than an insult. You brought disgrace upon yourself. You stepped on it, so you must pay for it. You scoffed and looked down on a certain person, attacking them not to talk reason, but to embarrass them and make yourselves appear learned and superior. Since you want to trample someone else to elevate yourselves, you have to be prepared to fall and kneel and dodge it. I'm not someone who accommodates other people's faults. If someone respects me, I respect them more. If someone takes a bite out of me, I'll devour them whole. Since you don't care about your face, I won't leave you any. If you agree, let's continue. If you don't agree, then this debate ends here. It's all up to you. Long Chen looked at the scholars indifferently. 
Long Chen could see the fury in their eyes, but he didn't care. If they wanted him in a bad mood, he'd have them in a bad mood. It would only be fair once everyone was pissed off. Fine, I agree. In front of everyone's shocked gazes, that scholar peeled off the ants from the bottom of his shoe and kowtowed to them three times. Everyone was shocked and then looked at the smiling Long Chen. Now, this fellow had fully offended the Philosopher Institute. Chapter 3949, War of Tongues, the scholar finished kowtowing to the ants three times and then put them inside his sleeve. He had kowtowed extremely hard, causing his forehead to bleed. But he didn't mind. He only glared at Long Chen with rancor. But did you kowtow so hard to get sympathy? Do you want to make yourself seem like the victim? I looked down on you before, but now I look down on you even more. Do you think you're so great that only you are allowed to trample over others? Long Chen looked at him disdainfully. Shut up. You are challenging all the scholars of the Vermilion Bird Empire to war. Do you think you're so clever? Then let's make sure to compete properly today, raged the scholar. Are you stupid? It has always been the case that there can be no number one in learning and no number two in martial arts. In martial arts, it's possible to determine who is first. But in terms of learning and culture, who can say that they are number one? In martial arts, someone could claim to be number one because that person truly could be standing at that height. But in terms of learning, anyone who dared to claim themselves as number one would either be a madman or an idiot. Other than that, I came to talk reason with you, remember? I'm not here to compete. If you want to compete, why compete with me, a martial artist? Just how inferior do you feel to make such a challenge? scoffed Long Chen. All paths lead to the same end. At the highest realm, there are naturally standards that can be used to judge. You say that there can be no number one in learning because you haven't reached that height. Do you dare to accept the challenge? demanded one person. He was a thin scholar who had tried to interject himself several times but failed. But now he finally had a chance. Then have you reached that highest realm? asked Long Chen. That person was left speechless. He was not even a Hanlin scholar. How could he dare to say that he had reached that height? Even without reaching that height, there are ways to determine who is superior. Perhaps we aren't enough to evaluate others, but when it comes to evaluating you, HMPH, it's clearly more than enough. Someone else immediately spoke up to help that person out of his predicament. Can you have some face? Second rates such as yourselves don't even have standards for judging. Who can say whose logic is right and whose is wrong? Oh, I know. You'll use numbers to shout that the person you like is right and the person you dislike is wrong, right? You wish to be the judge and the competitor at the same time. Aha, uh -huh. in all my years of fighting, from the mortal world to the immortal world, I've never seen anyone as shameless as you lot. Fine, when it comes to shamelessness, I am willing to accept you as number one, praised Long Chen. They wanted to compete with him with no standards at all, and the winner would be determined by whatever they said such shamelessness. Long Chen's eyes had been opened to the world. Nonsense! Every single person here is a hard-working nobleman with immense learning and wisdom. Don't judge them as petty little plebeians like yourself, raged that scholar. Your jealousy gave rise to resentment, and then you all started attacking me. You did so because you all thought that you were superior to me. You say that you are a nobleman. How come I can't see any sign of nobility from you all? said Long Chen. Naturally, it depends on who the nobleman is talking to. To fellow noblemen, one's words are like jade. For little plebeians, can noble words even be heard? Can such words even enter their hearts? If you were a nobleman, you would know that you can always learn from someone, no matter who it is. 
All things in this world have their own principles, their own inner essence. Even plebeians have their own strong points, their own code for survival. They don't steal from you and simply rely on themselves to survive. However, you keep talking down to them, calling them petty little people in order to make yourself look bigger. Who gave you the confidence to look down on others? demanded Long Chen. Long Chen's words were sharp and struck right on target, startling the cultivators present. If they couldn't sense the raging blood kai from his body, they might even think that he was another scholar. Most plebeians are dogs, thieves, trash that will harm others for the slightest profit. Their nature is ugly, and as they reproduce, they inherit that inferiority. Even if they get food and shelter, they refuse to improve themselves. They refuse to read or learn and would rather be degenerates that roll in filth. They will always live in poverty. In their entire lifetime, they will never enjoy status or wealth, argued another scholar. A nobleman cultivates the body through calm behavior, cultivates morality through frugality, and lives a simple life to demonstrate nobility. But you are using wealth to decide morality, to decide who is inferior and who is superior. Such a thing is even worse than a plebeian, so how can you enter the ranks of noblemen? Does putting on airs allow you to look down on other people's broken clothes? Does decking yourself in luxury allow you to laugh at other people's poverty? If your inner heart is so broken, how can you even talk about learning? The only reason you can stand here isn't because you are so amazing or because you worked so hard. It is only because your father and mother have the power to provide for your learning, said Long Chen disdainfully. This person definitely had a problem. His inner heart was so dark. But fortunately, he chose to be a scholar. If he was a cultivator, who knew what kind of calamity he would bring about on the poor? Using his logic, poor people simply deserved death. Thankfully, he was just a troll who liked to talk big. If he was a powerful cultivator instead, Long Chen would make sure that he wouldn't live to see tomorrow's sun. The Tao of the heavens is the survival of the fittest. Man follows the earth, the earth follows the heavens, the heavens follow the Tao, and the Tao follows the natural path. Even the heavens wish the strong to thrive while the weak are eliminated. That means that the heavenly Tao's are displeased by the weak. This brother's words were not wrong, so why are you speaking about his heart? If you wish to condemn someone, there's no need to come up with such excuses, said one of the previous scholar's friends. If the Tao follows the natural path, that means that the laws are flowing smoothly. If there is heaven, there is earth. Because there is yin, there is yang. There are high and low, rich and poor. Tell me, without the earth, where are the heavens? Without yin, where is yang? Without a high, how can there be a low? Without the poor, how could there be the wealthy? Heaven and earth face each other. Yin and yang support each other. High and low need each other, and the poor and rich establish each other, a manifestation of the differences within all things. This is the natural Tao. What is this nonsense about the heavenly Tao's being displeased? Next, snorted Long Chen. Only those with no desires can achieve the Tao. What qualifications do you have to speak of the Tao? shouted one person. Only those with no desires can achieve the Tao. You can't even control your own tongue, yet you speak of the Tao. Just keep your mouth shut. Next, Long Chen couldn't even be bothered to explain such a thing. An intense verbal sparring ensued. Unlike before, rather than debating them, Long Chen directly raised some problems from the actual questions, stifling them next. Next, in read, in the end. No one dared to ask another question as they were all dumbfounded. Long Chen's knowledge was so wide that it didn't matter what they asked. He was able to get straight to the essence of the question and then grasp some openings to counterattack, leaving them with no words to retort. In the end, no one amongst the scholars dared to speak again. 
on his own long chen had managed to leave them speechless causing all the cultivators to feel like prostrating themselves toward him in admiration no one else then i'm leaving i still have important matters to deal with seeing those furious gazes from the scholars long chen patted his butt and prepared to leave brother long that was a marvelous debate junior's sister has experienced what it means to be erudite and wise may i ask brother long to give junior's sister some pointers as well if you could pick out the flaws in my music i would be endlessly grateful just as long chen was about to leave the yellow-robed woman stopped him with a sincere expression do you really want me to give you criticism you just heard what kind of critique i am i'm not subtle or polite i might offend you long chen looked at this yellow-robed word with a touch of severity for some reason long chen detected some aura from her that made him feel uncomfortable the aura seemed to come from her herself yet also as if it came from her cultivation technique this uncomfortable feeling stemmed from the nine star hegemon body art thus long chen very much wished to know what was going on chapter three thousand nine hundred fifty a faulty note the yellow robed woman was beautiful and carried herself with a graceful demeanor every move of her seemed to radiate a noble aura yet it was neither overwhelming nor overbearing her innate charm made her seem likable and respectable although none of them knew her name it could be seen that amongst these disciples of the zither sect her position was the highest just now her flute had added to the beautiful music pushing the entire song to an even greater height she had brought them into the clouds a testament to just how skillful she was she was a perfect mix of beauty and power even so such a powerful zither sect disciple was actually so insistent on gaining long chen's pointers in the beginning people were simply jealous of long chen but after that verbal sparring and his display of knowledge they now looked at him in a new light and no longer dared to underestimate him think about it just how high was her status for her to lower herself to ask for long chen's pointers she must think that his judgment exceeded everyone else's present there are people who call themselves master of one of the ten thousand daos but on the path of music you are always an apprentice said the yellow-robed woman with a slight smile when she said this countless cultivators looked at the scholars disdainfully the meaning behind the look was to contrast themselves with this fairy of the zither sect her status was higher than theirs and her understanding of musical theory was deeper than theirs yet she was so humble as for them with just the slightest learning and ability they managed to swagger all the way to the heavens they really deserved to be slapped in the face in front of those disdainful looks the scholars expressions grew ugly the people that they deemed inferior were now looking down on them causing them to feel enraged but they were powerless to do anything about it in reed come all right then i'll just say what i have to say the zither music beforehand was flawless that was an ancient song called thousand mountains reflecting the snow the third part in particular which is also the climax was majestic a perfect mix of soft and powerful it is said that this song was created by an almighty expert of the music dao guang ningzi in his youth he roamed through mountains of ice seeing the snow at the top of the mountains looking like clouds he had a spark of inspiration and thus this song was born seeing long chen speak of the origin of the song that had just been played both the cultivators and the scholars present were shocked did long chen really have skill in this regard during his time in the high firmament academy long chen had spent days experiencing his soul being almost torn apart just to obtain more knowledge in the end he forcibly packed all those ancient tomes into his brain since zai yan was a music cultivator long chen spent some more time studying that aspect thus he did have quite some knowledge of the music dao 
and unexpectedly, it ended up coming in handy today. This song was created in Guang Ningzi's early years, so it has a powerful yang kai to it that suits his youth. As that ambition to soar into the heavens in one leap is displayed in this song, the final note is a rarely seen high note. Also, to play this high note requires one's control to reach a certain peak, a level that countless music cultivators will never be able to reach, said Long Chen with a bit of praise. Brother Long overpraises me. This junior sister cannot accept. Brother Long, can you please tell me where I was lacking? The yellow-robed woman once more asked humbly. Then I won't stand on courtesy. Your final high note was a faulty note. It was too prominent, and it seems that there was an intent to show off with it. It doesn't fit with the rest of the zither music. Although it sounds right, it is actually wrong. It is out of place, said Long Chen. As soon as he said this, everyone's expression changed. These words were a bit too hurtful and tactless. It was even more ruthless than when he spoke to the scholars. The yellow-robed woman's expression also changed a bit. As for Liao Yu Huang and the others, they were astonished. Wasn't this evaluation too ruthless? It was practically a complete rejection of her skills. Do you even understand musical theory? You call such a beautiful thing out of place. If it was out of place, why was it so beautiful? You're just making up profound-sounding nonsense, shouted the pale, pudgy scholar that had been silent for a long time. Unexpectedly, Long Chen smiled and clapped. I didn't expect that you could also talk normally. How rare! You got right to the point. However, we can discuss this question later. Let us first talk about this fairy's performance. Curiously, Long Chen actually praised the scholar this time, even though the praise wasn't very good. Brother Long, please enlighten me, said the yellow-robed woman. Her voice was still calm and humble, but she was clearly a bit thrown off. Long Chen looked at her and smiled slightly. Perhaps what I'm saying is hard to hear, but since you so sincerely insisted, I can only tell the truth. It's hard to accept criticism, but this pain is unavoidable. When it comes to the music Tao, because I am not a music cultivator, I can only judge from the viewpoint of a spectator. The previous zither music was flawless. When you joined in, although the timing, rhythm, and first note were also perfect, in the end you were someone who came in later, not from the start. As soon as you came in, you took the lead, leading everyone into the clouds in the sky. Although it gave a strong impact, after that impact, it gave off a sense of disharmony. Brother Long is saying that I should not use the flute to guide the climax, asked the yellow-robed woman. Long Chen shook his head. You still don't understand what I'm saying. A giant tree starts as a sprout, a tall tower starts with the foundation, and a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. You did not participate in the building of the foundation, so how can you suddenly jump from the peak of the tower? The work of everyone, the fruit that everyone worked for, was plucked by you alone. To have no start, and only the end, is a defiance of the natural order. Are you saying that I took other people's harvest for myself? The yellow-robed woman's expression suddenly changed. At this moment, there was finally a touch of anger in her eyes. Long Chen looked at her and didn't reply, and the woman also looked at him coldly. She finally said, An army needs a commander, and the ten thousand spirits need a leader. If a guide is not at the front, are they supposed to be at the rear? Everyone felt that Long Chen's words were going too far, accusing her of only pretending to be noble and virtuous, stealing other people's thunder. Why aren't you saying anything? Seeing him just stare at her without saying anything, she couldn't help pressing him. You're not even going to call me Brother Long anymore. Long Chen smiled helplessly. Then Brother Long, please continue giving me guidance, said the yellow-robed woman coldly. 
You are angry, said Long Chen profoundly. Upon hearing those words, a tremor coursed through the yellow-robed woman's heart. As a practitioner of the music Tao, intense emotional fluctuations were a taboo. It was because cultivating music meant cultivating one's innermost being, and her anger revealed a deficiency in her mastery, suggesting that her skills were still too shallow. What made her angry was Long Chen's hurtful words. But the reason they hurt her was because deep in her heart, or perhaps deep in her soul, something was causing mischief. If she didn't have certain feelings inside of her, his words would only cause confusion, not any emotional ripples. Thus, just by saying that she was angry, Long Chen had enlightened her about the major issues. Brother Long, please teach me. The yellow-robed woman suddenly handed her flute to Long Chen, leaving him dumbfounded. When it came to bragging, he was decent. But playing the flute. Chapter 3951 A Donkey Breaking Wind Long Chen frowned slightly at the yellow-robed woman. Was she intentionally making things hard on him? Were the zither sect's disciples so petty? She was the one who insisted on letting Long Chen point out her flaws. But after he refused, she also refused to let him refuse. At the very least, after he did as she asked whether he was right or wrong, it still counted as helping her no. However, was she not forcing Long Chen now? She wanted to see him play the flute. Did she think that if he could judge her, he could show her how to do it himself? Upon thinking all this, Long Chen's expression darkened. Just as Long Chen was about to coldly reject her, he saw the bewildered Liao Yu Huang to the side, and his icy words were swallowed back down. Liao Yu Huang had helped him before. If he were to become hostile with this yellow-robed woman, Liao Yu Huang would be very embarrassed. Liao Yu Huang had invited him here with good intentions, being very sincere. Thus, Long Chen didn't want to put her in a difficult position. HMPHI knew that he was only good in theory and worthless in practice. He's worse than dog shit. But do you not dare? sneered the pale, pudgy scholar. He finally had a chance to counterattack. A typical person with high standards, but low skill. He acts like he knows everything, but it's all superficial. Superficial? You're overestimating him. He doesn't even know anything superficial. It's all just him blindly making stuff up to con others. In the end, he's caught. The other scholars also began to jump in when they saw a chance for revenge. Liao Yu Huang hastily stepped forward when the situation turned sour. She then gave Long Chen an apologetic look and said, Brother Long, I'm sorry. Senior apprentice sister Wang Yi, please don't make things hard on. In front of the scholar's taunts, the yellow-robed woman's hostility, and Liao Yu Huang's apologetic pleading, Long Chen suddenly wore an unfathomable smile. Just like that, he received the flute. Brother Long. Liao Yu Huang was startled. I've never played the flute, nor do I know how to play any musical instrument. Just like those mouth sprayers said, I really only know a superficial amount. However, since I agreed to give her pointers, I will embarrass myself. Fairy Wang Yi does not agree with my judgment, so let's try it. Fairy Yu Huang, can you play the complete thousand mountains reflecting the snow for me? Long Chen looked at Liao Yu Huang. Brother Long, if you've never played the flute before, how are you going to? Liao Yu Huang was startled. She didn't want Long Chen to embarrass himself, and she also blamed herself for being meddlesome and causing trouble for Long Chen. It's fine. Although I've never played before, I know the theory. I'll just treat it as playing around. As for embarrassing himself, he he, I don't care about that. I've done many embarrassing things, and this much won't count as anything, laughed Long Chen. As Long Chen took hold of the flute, it became apparent to Liao Yu Huang that he was a novice, evident from his unsteady grip 
and posture. Witnessing this, the yellow-robed woman couldn't help but feel a pang of remorse. She shouldn't have taken out her anger on Long Chen, as that was repaying kindness with enmity. Brother Long. The yellow-robed woman also spoke up, wanting to take back what she had said. It's fine. Sometimes there's a huge difference between theory and practice. It just so happens that I can now corroborate my theory. But I feel like it's a bit taboo for me to use a fairy's flute. Does fairy have another flute? Asked Long Chen with a smile. This was a flute with ancient marks carved into it, and was made with top-grade immortal metal. So it was clearly not ordinary. Moreover, it was the one that the yellow-robed woman had just used. Considering the taboos between men and women, Long Chen wanted to use a different flute. The yellow-robed woman looked at Long Chen and finally appeared apologetic. She then shook his head. Brother Long's magnanimity is admirable. If you want to try it, you can just use my flute. Only then did the experts around take note that this flute was her beloved item. If Long Chen were to use it, would she use it again? Wouldn't that be indirectly kissing? Everyone looked from the yellow-robed woman to Long Chen, not knowing what was going on. They were on opposing ends just a moment ago, so why did the atmosphere suddenly become strange? Then, my apologies, said Long Chen. Suddenly, he asked, may I ask if Fairy Wanyi's cultivation technique is different from the other fairies? Brother Long, how did you know? Asked the yellow-robed woman in surprise. As expected. Long Chen simply smiled and didn't reply. He then indicated for Liao Yu Huang and the others to start playing. Liao Yu Huang and the others began playing the music once again. The sound of their zithers was like the babbling of a creek, causing everyone to become quiet and at peace in an instant. When Long Chen raised the flute to his mouth and lightly blew on it, it left everyone speechless. His posture was a bit correct, but as soon as he blew the flute, he almost blew them away. That sound was completely wrong, akin to the whistling wind blowing through a valley. This is the sound of a flute. Is he making us laugh to death? The scholars laughed when they heard this. How is it any different from a donkey's fart? Just get off the stage. Don't ruin the performance of the fairies. How shameless! If I was you, I'd have long since killed myself just to get it over with. The scholars had previously been left speechless by Long Chen, and now they finally had a chance to rain insults on him. Seeing this, Liao Yu Huang had a guilty expression, while the yellow-robed woman was even more ashamed. This time, it was all her fault. But now that things had reached this point, there was no way for her to stop things. Seeing so many people insulting Long Chen, she felt terrible, but there was nothing that she could do. It was her first time feeling such remorse. However, Long Chen's expression didn't even ripple in front of so many curses and insults. His display was like that of a master of the music Tao, completely immersed in the music Tao's realm. But then, the sound he was making was terrible. It was especially discordant amongst the beautiful zither music, ruining such beautiful zither music. Thousand mountains reflecting the snow was split into three parts. When the first part was done, Long Chen finally figured out how to properly make sound with the flute. He was no longer just blasting some noise. When the second part was over, Long Chen was capable of blowing a complete note. However, it was just a single note, and not even a tune. This Long Chen might be strong in other areas, but he has no talent in this regard. He's terrible at music. I heard that the music Tao requires a certain musical mind as a foundation. It isn't something that just anyone can master in read. Come, I don't understand. He clearly knows that he can't play. Why did he do this? Is embarrassing himself fun for him? I have to admire his guts. He can still look like an expert after playing so badly, 
and he's still playing like he's serious. He's only playing a single note and incapable of matching the rest of the music. It's like unleashing a single black crow in a flock of larks. The harsh cackling of the crow ruins the overall picture. The scholars were still mocking Long Chen. As for the cultivators, they were unable to bear it either. They had originally been very satisfied with his display against the scholars, but now his flute music agitated them. Fortunately, the sound of his flute wasn't that loud. It was unknown if it was because he was intentionally playing quietly or because he knew that he was terrible and didn't dare to blow harder. When the song reached the climax, the zither music began to rapidly climb. Long Chen then took a deep breath. The next moment, the flute quivered and a loud, resounding sound instantly formed a resonance with the zither music. It was like a kunpeng suddenly leaping into flight, soaring through the heavens. At that moment, the yellow-robed woman was filled with disbelief. She slowly covered her mouth. Chapter 3952 Zenith Star Covering Art This melody directly brought the people around beyond the clouds, surpassing even the majestic and powerful tunes played by the yellow-robed woman. At that moment, a profound realization dawned upon everyone. They finally understood that all of Long Chen's previous plays had been mere stepping stones, leading up to this very note. Everything beforehand had served as a preparation for this. The sound of the flute surged like a tsunami that split rocks and blasted apart the clouds. Its pitch was high, but it wasn't piercing. Instead, it carried people effortlessly into the vast expanse of the cosmos. It was like their souls were brought into an endless starry sea, which allowed them to see an unprecedented space. Furthermore, although Long Chen played the same note as the yellow-robed woman, it gave off a completely different feeling. Previously, her tune had felt like jumping off a tall tower that the zither music had constructed. On the other hand, Long Chen's note was like an underwater volcano erupting, unleashing a pillar of water that pierced the dome of the heavens. Its power was continuous and unstoppable. Most importantly, Long Chen's note was not played on his own. It was something that followed Liao Yu Huang and the other zither music. Thus, when this high note reached its peak, it was like a volcano exploding. The sound seemed to linger in the air, echoing throughout the cosmos and not dissipating for a long time. A profound silence enveloped the crowd, leaving everyone awestruck. Even the scholars who had relentlessly mocked Long Chen the whole time were now taken aback. Their disbelief was palpable, and they didn't dare to believe their ears in read come even as amateurs. That final note shook them, piercing them deep into their souls. They would never be able to forget it in this lifetime. Even if they didn't understand music theory, they knew that this final note was higher in realm than the yellow-robed woman's. As for the cultivators, they were simply stunned. Long Chen's final note possessed a spiritual will, the desire of a transcendent figure that wished to live beyond the struggles of the mortal world, the will of a saint who bemoaned the state of humanity. It was a realm that had reached that height. A cultivator that was immersed in endless slaughter and bloodshed would have long since lost their original character. How could they have such a pure spiritual will? At this moment, it was so silent that even the faintest sound of a pin dropping would have reverberated. Everyone was still immersed in their shock from that final note. But after a long moment, the silence gave way to a thunderous applause that echoed throughout the surroundings. Now, the scholars who had looked down and insulted him were too ashamed to even raise their heads. They wanted to find a hole to hide in. Long Chen's final high note completely eclipsed all his previous flaws. It was like the perfect final dot on a painting that perfected it so brilliant that even all his previous flaws were nothing in comparison. I've embarrassed myself. Long Chen cupped his fists toward the crowd and then turned to the yellow-robed woman. In this world, there is no natural leader. 
a true leader will need to form a resonance with those that they lead without a flourishing root system how can the tree flourish it was the same song and your skill was a million times greater than mine if you can comprehend the principles behind this the effect will definitely be countless times better i apologize for my rudeness and i am endlessly grateful for seniors pointers please accept this kowtow the yellow-robed woman directly knelt in front of long chen not calling him brother long anymore she directly called him senior even treating him with the etiquette of a disciple greeting a master seeing this long chen was shocked he hadn't expected her to suddenly do such a thing thus he hastily lifted her back up fairy whitey is too courteous i only know a little about musical theory i really cannot accept such a thing senior are you still angry with me if that is the case i beg you for forgiveness although long chen was gripping wan yi's arms not letting her kneel she was still half kneeling refusing to fully rise long chen truly had been a bit angry with her feeling like she was too petty he had felt like he had overestimated her however seeing her do such a thing his anger was gone and he hastily said what are you saying everyone has different dows different opinions only when everyone gives their own view clashing and corroborating with each other's viewpoints can there be growth i am not so petty also you can't call me senior if you don't look down on me you can just call me brother long we can converse as members of the same seniority it was only when Wanyi saw that long chen truly wasn't angry that she finally rose she once more thanked long chen brother long's pointers have opened a path for me i hope to hear brother long's pointers more often in the future long chen bitterly smiled i really don't dare i was just viewing things from the point of a spectator moreover the music dao is the cultivation form closest to the heavenly dows there's no way i could dare to give you pointers brother long is too humble i was caring too much about my own performance that i neglected to cooperate with my sisters moreover when you tried to correct me i didn't let your words of wisdom enter my head i'm truly ashamed said wan yi thinking of her previous reaction she felt like she had lost all face long chen smiled and said there's no need to feel so conflicted just like that pale pudgy fellow said it was ridiculous for me to criticize such a beautiful song in truth music is the sound of the heart an expression of an idea as long as you feel like it is beautiful and are immersed in it then that is the true music tao if you only pursue technique but neglect the artistry then you are putting the cart in front of the horse that pale scholar's expression sank when long chen mentioned him he had never been so humiliated in this lifetime unable to bear this any more he could only lower his head and examine his tea as for the other scholars they also didn't dare to look at long chen they wanted to leave but also felt like leaving would be telling everyone that they were afraid of long chen thus they simply thickened their faces and sat there not looking at long chen i will remember brother long's pearls of wisdom i will work hard to digest all the understanding that i've gained today said wang yi she truly held long chen in great esteem now long chen was like a mirror today she finally saw another side to herself clearly long chen suddenly had a thought and silently transmitted to her junior sister your cultivation technique doesn't seem to match your character do you feel anything like that i cultivate the zither sect zenith star covering art when he was so surprised by long chen's statement that she replied without thinking but she suddenly stopped herself this was a secret that shouldn't be shared with outsiders the zenith star covering art star covering long chen's heart thudded this name seemed a bit off was it related to the nine star head gem and body art 
was this uncomfortable feeling because of these two cultivation techniques brother long where are you staying if you don't mind i'd like to pay you a visit when it's convenient i just arrived and haven't found anywhere to stay answered long chen truthfully then why not come to our zither mansion we can immerse ourselves in the music dao together it just so happens that i can ask for your pointers wan yi's eyes lit up as soon as she heard long chen's reply long chen didn't know if he should decline or accept luckily there was a disturbance in the crowd that saved him from answering at this moment a group of martial artists wearing imperial robes walked over those people startled the princes and princesses as they knew these people's origins the emperor decrees that long chen is to have an audience with him when this slimy voice rang out long chen saw eunuch wise cold gaze in read com chapter three thousand nine hundred fifty three beating up eunuch why long chen hadn't expected eunuch why to suddenly appear here but upon looking at the sinister smile hanging on his face long chen knew that he was up to no good to his surprise the princes and princesses all stood up when this eunuch appeared it seemed that his status was not something that they could disrespect long chen hadn't expected a single eunuch to possess such prestige it seemed that he had underestimated him eunuch wise arrival startled everyone why would the emperor wish to see long chen just what kind of background did he have the vermilion bird empire's emperor was not in existence that just anyone could see however long chen was specifically named to see him because of this countless people began to make guesses about his background at this moment eunuchwai strode purposefully toward long chen his smile revealing a malevolent glint in his eyes trailing behind him was a group of supreme divine venerates however they all stared at long chen coldly their gazes exuding an innate arrogance even in front of the princes and princesses their faces were icy not even looking at them long chen i've waited a long time for you you finally appeared ah i've reported your matter to his majesty so shouldn't you thank me ah eunuch wai laughed feeling very pleased with himself clearly he had told the emperor about long chen and yu king shuen moreover he had definitely embellished the narrative with unfavorable details designed to cast long chen in a negative light he knew that long chen would come here so he had long since set up eyes around the city in truth the moment long chen appeared outside the capital and clashed with the crown prince someone already went to report long chen's arrival to him the reason yuna chui only arrived now was because he had gone to see the emperor first after he got to meet the emperor he wasted no time in divulging the news of long chen's presence by skillfully interjecting some extra details he managed to bring an imperial summons for long chen hence he was exceptionally pleased with himself now thinking that he had already won now he was just waiting to see how long chen would be executed oh eunuch why why are you smiling so brilliantly what happened have you been short of money lately that you were forced to work as a prostitute long chen smiled upon hearing long chen's words everyone jumped in shock eunuch wai was one of the emperor's personal servants did long chen not want his life any more as anticipated a cold expression replaced eunuch wai's smile and a flicker of murderous intent glimmered in his eyes let me see just how long you can act this arrogant you should know your place and obey the rules well you won't get to live to see how long i can be arrogant said long chen lightly eunuch wai smiled sinisterly there is no xia guong to protect you now without his support your status is even lower than a dobbs but you still dare to come to the vermilion bird empire to propose why don't you take a piss first and look at your own reflection there do you think that princess king shuen is someone that you can touch princess king shuen the crowd was startled 
this black-robed man had come to propose to princess kingshuan it had to be known that princess kingshuan was said to have inherited the vermilion bird empire's strongest jilai bloodline was this little fellow crazy as for yu kaiksu who had wanted to wager with long chen she was startled so long chen's target was actually yu kingshuan thinking of how he had rejected her wager she was angry take a piss and look at my reflection i really haven't done that before can you give me a demonstration i wonder did your respected self piss while standing or squatting long chen's smile didn't even twitch in front of eunuch wise mocking at this moment everyone fell deathly silent even the divine venerates accompanying eunuch wai were struck with astonishment as their gaze fixated upon long chen their expressions a mix of disbelief and incredulity long chen's words had just touched upon a major taboo for any eunuch it was the greatest insult for them as expected eunuch wai's face twisted with fury you little brute you before eunuch wai could finish long chen already swung out his hand in one breath long chen had slapped eunuch wai thirty-six times in the face after he finished before those divine venerates could even react long chen was holding eunuch wai's throat lifting him into the air eunuch wai's hairless face once plump with a healthy layer of fat now bore the marks of repeated blows it had swelled to three times its normal size resembling nothing short of a grotesque pig's head stop it was only now that those divine venerates recovered from their shock they had never dreamed that a little immortal king would dare to strike someone here so they brandished their weapons however long chen didn't even look at those weapons instead he icily stared at eunuch wai do you want to try cursing me again although eunuch wai was shocked and enraged he couldn't unleash any power as his throat was caught in that one moment of carelessness his life was caught in long chen's grasp release eunuch wai or don't blame us for being merciless shouted one divine venerate if you dare to attack me i will crush this white-skinned pig if you don't believe me try it boss long sen never submits to threats said long chen coldly you they had never seen someone so arrogant in this lifetime this guy was practically lawless oh really what if i were to demand that you let him go suddenly the void quivered and a voice came from a great distance shaking the world invading people's souls with its unquestionable might as soon as that voice rang out everyone present be it the princes and princesses scholars or commoners all knelt on the ground this voice spread far and wide with immense divine might shaking the entire vermilion bird city your majesty this person is too arrogant he looks down on your dignity and laws and he even wishes to lay his hand on the princess he deserves to be killed eunuch wai immediately shouted when he heard this voice as a result long chen slapped him thirty-six times again now his swollen face split open and bled looking like it was on the verge of exploding i told you boss long sen doesn't submit to threats not from anyone try it again long chen looked at the almost crippled eunuch wai in his hand brat you've got guts as this roar rang throughout the city the entire city began to quiver you're right my guts have always been big otherwise how would i dare to come to the vermilion bird empire by myself to take a wife long chen shrugged in front of this imperial rage brat come see me now a roar once more rang out long chen simply tossed eunuch wai to the ground eliciting a pained grunt from him as eunuch wai attempted to rise long chen ruthlessly stomped a foot on his head causing the very bricks beneath them to shatter and explode as a result eunuch wai's head was mercilessly driven into the ground leaving a big imprint 
However, acting as if he had done nothing at all, Long Chen swaggered away. All the experts then looked from the unconscious Yuna Chui, whose head was in the ground, to that arrogant figure that was walking away from them, feeling supremely dumbfounded. Just where does this fellow come from? In read com chapter 3954 mediocre. You little bastard, you have big guts to defy my will. Inside a glorious palace, decked in splendor, a square-faced middle-aged man sat atop the dragon throne, radiating an aura of dignity and prestige, but there was now a hint of anger on his face. His aura was strong like the sea with a natural ruler Kai. But despite displaying an electric gaze, his complexion was gloomy. On both of his sides, there were dozens of old experts wearing golden robes, all having white hair. But despite their age, the auras that they gave off were very frightening. The middle-aged man was precisely the current emperor of the Vermilion Bird Empire, Yu Zioyan. Atop his dragon throne was a giant sign, Royal Family Hall. The royal family hall was only opened to judge matters relating to the emperor's family, and those who could enter this hall were the highest, noblest existences within the royal family. So, these elders were mostly cousins and relatives of the emperor. To put it frankly, this hall was only opened when a prince or princess committed a grave taboo. The elders would then decide what to do with them jointly here. Your Majesty, come yourself i've already asked around this long chen's origins are not ordinary moreover it's only natural for a youngster to feel prideful and arrogant there were two spots beside the dragon throne and two beautiful women were sitting there one of them looked somewhat similar to yu kingshuan she was yu kingshuan's mother and she was the one speaking hmph youngsters don't know how high the heavens are I want to see just what skill he has to dare speak so arrogantly to me, snorted Yu Zioyan. Hearing this, Yu Kingshuan's mother exchanged a glance with the other woman. There seemed to be a teasing expression in their eyes. Now, there would be something interesting to watch. Long Chen has arrived. After the eunuch at the door shouted, the people in the room instantly turned to see a black-robed man slowly walk in. This time, there was no need for anyone to say anything to him. Wang Chen had already put away the Ming Hong saber. After all, he had come to propose. Carrying a saber while doing so was a bit improper. Even so, as soon as Long Chen walked in, the atmosphere in the room became tense. All of their gazes swept over his body like sharp blades, as if they were trying to see through him. Ignoring these gazes, Long Chen looked around and saw that the hall was very large. Yu Zioyan was seated atop the dragon throne, looking down from high above and coldly watching as Long Chen walked in. As others sized Long Chen up, he also did the same to them. But then, randomly looking around like this in the presence of the emperor was a very rude conduct. A prince or princess who did such a thing would be struck by the rod twenty times. However, Long Chen did not seem to care. One reason was because he didn't know, and the other reason was that even if he did know, he still had to do the same. Otherwise, how would he show his power to them? How would they talk a bit? When Long Chen looked at Yu Zioyan, his tense heart instantly relaxed a great deal. This Yu Zioyan was completely different from the Yu Zioyan on the martial heaven continent, be it his look or his aura. After that, Long Chen looked at the woman beside the emperor, instantly recognizing her to be Yu Qingxuan's mother. Junior Long Chen greets mother-in-law. I am indebted to you just for allowing me to meet you. In my hurry to come here, I did not prepare a good gift. I truly apologize. Long Chen actually ignored Yu Zioyan and first bowed to Yu Qingxuan's mother. Yu Qingxuan's mother smiled and nodded to him, her expression very friendly. However, she didn't speak as it wasn't her time to. You are not just lacking in manners. It looks like you have no manners at all. 
don't you know that there is a proper order of etiquette are you not even able to differentiate the hierarchy here said an elder it was clearly a lack of respect to not kowtow to the emperor and instead greet the empress first such an offence could result in a severe punishment only then did long chen look at yu Ziyuan, who was also looking straight at him as they stared at each other the atmosphere in the palace seemed to freeze long chen was patient he stared at yu Ziyuan, and yu Ziyuan stared at him darkly both not saying a word to each other the silence lasted a full hour before yu Ziyuan finally shouted what a rude brat how dare you not pay respect to me do you think that i am not worth it i long chen will only kneel to my father and mother not even heaven and earth can make me kneel well since you've spoken it means that you've agreed all right father-in-law accept your son-in-law's respect long chen started to kneel stop when did i agree to this raged yu Ziyuan. He waved his hand, and before Long Chen could fully kneel, a wave of power crashed into him. As a result, Long Chen was forced back three steps before he could stabilize his swaying body, causing his heart to shake. Yu Ziyuan was truly powerful. That power was not just strong, it was a mix of soft and hard energy. Considering Long Chen's current strength, someone who could silently push him like this was definitely an absolutely terrifying existence as for the others in the hall seeing long chen able to stabilize himself in three steps they were all shocked including yu Ziyuan. considering yu Ziyuan's power under normal circumstances when long chen was caught off guard he should have been directly blown outside the palace moreover even if Long Chen was prepared and unleashed his full power to resist, the earth shouldn't be able to endure that power, and the protective formation would activate. However, Long Chen simply retreated three steps. Let alone damaging the ground, he didn't even damage the carpet, which meant that Yu Ziyuan's power was dispelled within Long Chen's body, not dispersed beneath his feet. Thus, Everyone looked at Long Chen with a new level of respect. What? Your Majesty, are you going back on your word? I don't think that matches your status, no? Long Chen smiled slightly. When Long Chen said this, Yu Qingxuan's mother smiled. She thought that Long Chen was quite crafty, grasping this chance to be absolutely shameless. His face was truly thick. What nonsense! To kneel to me is to greet the emperor of the Vermilion Bird Empire. Now that you have entered the Vermilion Bird Empire, you must abide by the empire's laws. As the ninety-fifth generation's emperor, am I not worthy of this? Demanded Yu Ziyuan coldly. He didn't particularly care about this etiquette, but Long Chen's expression greatly displeased him. Long Chen shrugged indifferently. Ninety-fifth generation, ninety-eighth generation, what does it matter to me? I only offer my respects to you because you are my father-in-law. What shamelessness! Your cultivation base is average, and your looks are mediocre. What qualifications do you have to marry my most beloved daughter? Barked you, Zion. My looks are mediocre. Have you ever looked in the mirror? Even with your looks, you could marry my peerlessly beautiful mother-in-law. So what right do you have to say such a thing to me? Demanded Long Chen angrily while looking at Yu Qingxuan's mother. At that moment, the entire royal family hall fell deathly silent. All those imperial experts were struck as dumb as wooden chickens. I think you should take a look at Inread, Com Chapter 3000. 955 using force, ha ha ha. Yu Qingxuan's mother and the other woman laughed at the same time. But they quickly remembered that this wasn't a place to laugh, so they turned their faces away. On the other hand, Yu Ziyuan's face was dark with fury. He had seen all kinds of existences in this world, but he never met someone who dared to point and curse at him. 
as for the other experts of the imperial family they looked from yu Zioyun to long chen not a single one of them daring to make a noise but they had to admit that while yu Zioyun was not ugly he had no connection with the word handsome long chen was right but no one else would dare to state this truth you're spouting bullshit yu Zioyun cursed at long chen your majesty take note of your propriety at that moment an elder sternly shouted at the emperor his face bore deep wrinkles including his eyes reflecting the passage of time also he stood as a living relic the most senior member of the imperial family within the vermilion bird empire as a result even the emperor had to be respectful toward him blessed with great authority if he felt that the emperor was being unfair to his sons and daughters he had the authority to veto the emperor's rule that would activate the imperial parliament and the decision would be made by casting votes thus when the elder spoke up yu Zioyun took a deep breath and quelled his rage long chen's gaze roved around quickly it seemed that this elder was someone who even dared to scold the emperor the vermilion bird empire truly did care about seniority big brother zayek yu hong was wrong if there are no good methods then i can only use force murmured long chen quietly before long chen left zayek yu hong had warned him that yu zayoyan had a bad temper even if you were nice he wouldn't like you and if you weren't nice he still wouldn't like you thus if things couldn't be discussed in peace it would be better to just barge through however there was one thing that long chen had to make sure of he couldn't offend the two empresses as long as he pulled those two to his side there shouldn't be any problem on the way here long chen had been pondering over whether or not he should get along with yu zioyun unamicably. however his own temper wasn't good would he really be able to restrain himself other than that if he did restrain himself too hard would it produce too many negative emotions would it traitor his dark energy and awaken his heart devil hence when yuna chui appeared long chen decided to use force otherwise if he was constantly enduring insults and provocations wouldn't he be bullied to death by yuna chui you don't know anything about rules or etiquette you even beat people on the streets with your character what qualifications do you have to touch my daughter shouted yu zioyan coldly what use do rules and etiquette have in the heavenly flame world why didn't you talk about rules and etiquette to yan zu's son when he was going to devour your daughter also why did i be up yunich why wasn't it because he insulted me first not killing him was giving king shuan face otherwise not even ten of his lives would have been enough to quell my anger snorted long chen yu Xiaoyan was enraged you you're using your previous favor as blackmail material a nobleman would not do such a thing long chen brought up how yan zu's son yan hong had wanted to devour Yu Qingxuan for the heavenly rainbow flame back in the heavenly flame world, and how he had saved her. This fact was known to all. With his status as Yu Qingxuan's savior, after he brought this matter up, the air in the room changed. What damn blackmail! Qingxuan and I sincerely love each other. For her, I am willing to even sacrifice my life. How is that blackmail? You better keep your fucking mouth clean. Yu Zioyun couldn't endure it and barked back at Long Chen. Your majesty, your dignity, your decorum is spouting obscenities the manner of the ruler of a nation, warned the elder again. But he's clearly the one who did it first. Why don't you scold him? Yu Zioyun's face darkened with fury. He is but a child without a name or status in the vermilion bird empire he would be considered the most common commoner on the other hand you the ruler of a nation are shouting at a commoner inside your palace and even spouting such obscenities what kind of decorum is that being reprimanded like this yu zioyan quivered with rage 
he could only point at Long Chen. All right, brat, count yourself vicious. Long Chen was startled and quickly realized that his calculations were wrong. It seemed that the emperor wasn't the sole decision maker here. Instead, the important decision seemed to be made in a discussion between multiple parties. Long Chen quickly put away his wild attitude when he realized this. Your Majesty, although I am arrogant, it also depends on who I am facing. King Xuan is my beloved, and she is even more important than my life. Although I come with nothing, I have a sincere heart. I have no betrothal gift because there is simply no gift that can compare to King Xuan. Any betrothal gift would be a blasphemy to her. So all I brought is my life. This time, Long Chen's words could count as pleasant. But Long Chen truly had no experience in this regard. He didn't know how he was supposed to offer a betrothal gift. If he brought out something and was rejected, that would be too awkward. Hearing this, Yu Qingxuan's mother and the other woman nodded slightly. Although Long Chen was arrogant, at least, he knew how to take a step back in read. Come, however, Yu Xiaoyan was still enraged as he heard a different kind of meaning in Long Chen's words. Thus, he furiously shouted, Are you saying that if I don't agree to this marriage, you will face me with your life? What a joke! Do you think I'm afraid of you? Hearing this, Long Chen almost lost control of his temper. Just how did the man before him manage to twist his words into a threat? Could it be that this idiot emperor lacked the ability to comprehend the meaning behind words? Your Majesty, Long Chen is only saying that he is willing to die for King Xuan and that he would walk through fire for her. He is expressing his sincerity, said the other woman. Seeing one of the empresses speak up for him, Long Chen was gratified. He suddenly realized that Yu Qingxuan had probably told her mother about him. Otherwise, why would this other woman also speak up for him? Upon thinking of that, his confidence inflated. With the support of both empresses, everything could be handled. Sincerity? HMPH marriage is a major matter. It is the fathers and mothers that must discuss this matter. There can't be a marriage without going through this process. If you were to act arbitrarily, you would only make others laugh at you. What sincerity? Said Yu Xiaoyan irritably. That's right, child, why haven't your father and mother come? Asked that beautiful woman. Upon hearing this, Long Chen's expression instantly darkened. His first thought was about his parents in the mortal world. He had no idea how he could bring them here. He also thought of his biological parents. He had no memory of them and didn't even know where they were. As a result, his mouth quivered a few times, but he had no idea what to say. Yu Qingxuan's mother and the other empress saw the pain in his eyes and exchanged a glance. They both sensed something wrong. Was this child an orphan? Yu Qingxuan's mother hastily said, Long Chen, if you wish to marry Qingxuan, it probably won't be that easy. You have to be mentally prepared. Empress Yu. Yu Xiaoyan stared at his wife a bit unhappily. This was essentially an open warning to Long Chen. It meant that they didn't reject Long Chen, but there would be many tests awaiting him. Little fellow, do you really wish to marry the princess? Just then, the elder that had repeatedly chided the emperor spoke to Long Chen for the first time. In read, Com chapter 3956, the rules Long Chen turned to the elder, realizing that it was this fellow whose word truly carried weight. Of course, Long Chen nodded. The elder smiled and an indescribable expression appeared in his turbid eyes. Do you know that this won't be easy? Difficult isn't impossible, and only something difficult is worth doing. No matter how difficult it is, I must marry King Xuan, said Long Chen resolutely. The elder nodded. Good. Your Majesty, youngsters are full of vigor and don't pay attention to the rules. In order to not lose your propriety, let this old man take your place to explain. 
according to the vermilion bird empire's laws commoners cannot marry royalties thus you would need to pass the scholar exams or reach the rank of general only then would you be qualified to propose to a princess in order to take the scholar exams you'll need to provide three generations of background checks if there is no record of any crimes then the lowest requirement would be for you to become a hanlon scholar no wonder that pale pudgy fellow was so arrogant it seems that a hanlon scholar is actually on par with a princess realized long chen it is forbidden to use such obscene language in the palace said an elder behind long chen long chen then eyed the elder and the latter's face drooped like noodles long chen had the urge to ask him what obscene language he had just used on the other hand the ancient elder explaining things to long chen continued a hanlin scholar spends decades studying and learning perhaps one in ten thousand students might reach this rank they are the pillars of the empire so naturally their status is not ordinary the other option would be to reach the rank of general that would be a struggle on the martial path you would need to start off as an ordinary soldier and through accumulating merit you would rise to the rank of general that is a rank equivalent to a handling scholar and is also qualified to propose to a princess are there any further conditions asked long chen of course everything i said before is just to gain the qualifications to propose after that you will need to present a marriage contract which must be thoroughly studied by the royal family in other words everyone here would evaluate if the marriage contract is acceptable the main question is your character your conduct and your morality also the contents of this evaluation would be the process through which you reach the rank of hanlin scholar or general was there any cheating or immoral conduct we will vote on this and if you pass you will need to undergo three trials after these three difficult trials are complete you can get married to a princess of course after all this is said and done if the princess does not wish to marry you then everything is meaningless said the elder anything else asked long chen after you are married in order to make sure that the bloodline is not lost the children must take the surname of the mother or one of the other surnames of the vermilion bird empire for example ju or huo in other words you would be marrying into the vermilion bird empire continued the elder anything else the elder smiled and looked at yu Xiaoyan. other than that the most important point is that even if you satisfy all these requirements as the father his majesty naturally has veto power at this moment yu Xiaoyan smiled looking a bit sinister everyone thought that long chen would be dejected or erupt in a rage unexpectedly his expression was still calm and he indifferently said none of that is difficult no matter what challenges you give me king shuen will marry me seeing that calmness the experts present were moved the process that had just been explained to him was frighteningly difficult did this youngster really have so much assurance yu Xiaoan was also stunned it had to be known that he had veto power if he rejected long chen in the end then all his efforts would be for nothing but long chen's confidence made him feel slightly uneasy did this youth really come prepared yu Xiaoan couldn't help looking at his two empresses they seemed to rather admire long chen's display but there was nothing else that he could see in truth yu Xiaoyan had overestimated long chen how could he have any assurance or preparations what long chen was thinking about was that if they were going to make things impossible for him then there was no point in doing this if they plan to do so then why bother with the exams or trials thus long chen would stick around for a bit and see if things really were impossible to do he would just run away with the princess from the start he had never cared if he would lose face from doing so he was capable of enduring all kinds of things 
if you Zioion and these royal experts knew what Long Chen was thinking, they would definitely beat this shameless fellow to death. Do you clearly understand the rules? asked the elder. Yes, I understand. For King Shuin, I will put in all my effort. I don't care what trials I have to go through. In any case, he had no intention of following their rules, so he instantly relaxed and looked noble. According to the rules, you do have the right to appeal once. If your appeal is reasonable and receives approval, you can change the trial to one of more suitable difficulty, said the elder. Long Chen hastily waved his hand. No, no, Princess Kingshuan is an unparalleled fairy. In my heart, she is like a heavenly fairy from the heavens, my beloved, that is even more important than my life. Even if I have to die a million times for her, I am willing. You cannot lower the difficulty. If the difficulty is lowered, I will not be able to fully express my sincerity. That would then be blasphemy to Princess Kingshuan. Let me tell you, I will fight anyone who dares to lower the difficulty in Reed. Calm seeing Long Chen be so firm, all the elders exchanged glances, startled. It seemed that Long Chen deserved praise for his courage. Since that is the case, you can sign the appraisal document. If you cannot pass, you can't blame anyone else. The elder took out a document. Who cared about this piece of paper? If Yu Zioan simply had veto power, all these formalities were nothing more than decoration. If they wanted to play like this, Long Chen would play with them. When the time came, they would see who beat who and who was more shameless than who. Long Chen had never been afraid of anyone when it came to this regard. After signing the document, Long Chen took out two small cases respectfully offering them to Yu Qingchuan's mother and the other empress. Junior came too hastily to be able to prepare any good gifts, but I hope you won't laugh at me for these meager offerings. Are you trying to bribe the empresses? demanded Yu Zioan coldly. Your majesty, pay attention to your words. This child is offering filial piety. If you blame him for it, that would be too rude. How could the vermilion bird empire's etiquette be simply tossed aside like that? How can we reject a child's filial piety? Yu Qingxuan's mother smiled and received Long Chen's gifts. Upon hearing this, Yu Ziyuan's expression changed. He suddenly had a bad feeling and looked at his two wives in disbelief. It seemed that these two wives of his didn't dislike Long Chen. He smelled the hint of a scheme. Child, as your seniors, we have nothing good to give you. You have come to my vermilion bird empire to marry the empire's princess. Whether you succeed or not, for now, you can count as a member of the vermilion bird empire. So, I'll give you this status plate for now. It will make it easier for you to move within the empire. Yu Qingxuan's mother handed a golden tablet to Long Chen. When they saw this tablet, Everyone's countenance changed, and even the ancient elder frowned. Empress, aren't you being a bit inappropriate? This chapter, upload first at Inread.com, chapter 3957, The Empress's Attitude, How Can I Not Reciprocate? Long Chen is so modest that he has given up his chance to appeal. Giving him a status plate in exchange for his gift is simply natural. Furthermore, this status plate will only let him skip some unnecessarily complex procedures. Even if I didn't give it to him, if he wanted to get one, it would only be a matter of time before he got it. Rather than wasting time on complex procedures, why not be more direct and formally bring him into the loop? You should know just how valuable time is to cultivators. There is no point wasting it, said Yu Qingxuan's mother. Ah, this mother-in-law was truly great. Long Chen smiled inside. There was definitely nothing to fear now. It seemed that Yu Qingchuan had long since told her mother about him, and this future mother-in-law approved of him. Everything would definitely go smoothly. Even if the emperor didn't like him, so what? 
Zia Yuhong had already said that Yu Ziyuan was an idiot. If it weren't for his outstanding empresses, he wouldn't have his current accomplishments. In the Vermilion Bird Empire, perhaps his word was law, but when it came to the family, these two empresses were definitely stronger than him. Cultivators that are arrogant and prideful have fickle characters. I feel like some procedures cannot be skipped. After all, these procedures are evidence for us to see whether Long Chen is hard-working. It is a trial for his character, said an elder who gave off no wara or fluctuations. This elder was a scholar and also a member of the royal family. The imperial family's disciples were skilled in martial arts and culture. Although they leaned more on martial learning, they had to treat scholarly learning as important as well. Thus, there were quite a few scholars within the imperial family. That is correct. Empress, if you give Long Chen this status plate, it would be giving him special treatment. It's unfair. If this trial starts off unfair, then there is no point to it, said another elder. Clearly, they disliked Long Chen, especially his arrogant and unrestrained character. As more and more people voiced their dissent, the once warm smiles of the two empresses slowly transformed into icy expressions. As for the emperor, seeing this situation, he chose to keep his mouth shut. Long Chen saw that his two mother-in-laws were about to get angry, so he hastily said, Junior is grateful for your kind intentions. However, these trials are simple to me. My heart will remain devoted to King Shuen forever, and thus, how could I fear such tiny trials? I have confidence in myself and in King Shuen, so I hope my two esteemed mother-in-laws will also place some trust in me. Trust me, I can handle it all. The countenance of Yu Kingshuan's mother was darkening with so many people opposing her. She couldn't help but feel bad considering Long Chen, a junior, had graciously presented her with a gift. As a senior, it seemed only appropriate for her to reciprocate with a gift of her own. However, their opposition didn't give her any face, leaving her naturally displeased. However, Long Chen's smiling confidence did make her expression improve a bit. Good child, treat it as Auntie owing you. There will be plenty of time for Auntie to pay you back. How could Long Chen not understand what she was saying? She was clearly telling him that there was no need to be afraid. She would open a back door for him. Seeing the delight in his eyes, Yu Qingxuan's mother smiled. Inside, she thought to himself, this child is quite clever. Since it's decided, Junior will bid farewell to Auntie. I have to go prepare for the trials. Long Chan once more bowed to Yu Qingxuan's mother and the other empress before leaving. Once Long Chen left, all the elders paid their respects to the emperor and empresses. The emperor personally sent off that ancient elder. He only returned once he had sent that elder off. Now, there were only three people left in the palace. Without everyone else around them, Yu Ziyuan's wives stared at him, and he stared at them as well. He coldly said, Don't look at me. I dislike that little fellow, and I will not accept him marrying my daughter. I don't care what you say. I refuse to approve. And your reason? The two of them spoke up at almost the exact same time. I am the 95th emperor, and King Shuin is my daughter. If I don't like him, if I disapprove, that is all. Why would I need to give any reason? Said Yu Ziyuan angrily. That might not be up to you, said Yu King Shuin's mother. What? Do I not get authority over my daughter's marriage? Raged Yu Ziyuan. Just look at yourself. You know that you're the 95th emperor, yet you start roaring after just a few sentences. What's the point of roaring? If roaring was useful, donkeys would have taken over the world by now. All roaring can do is scare a group of well-behaved children. Did your roars scare off Long Chen? Yu Qingxuan's mother shook her head disappointedly. 
you're Kingshuin's father, but big sister Hewixin is still Kingshuin's mother. She came from her body, so big sister has to have at least a 50% voice in this decision. Furthermore, I can count as her mother as well. I should have at least a 10% voice, right? The two of us added together is 60%, said the other empress. Before she could even finish, Yu Zioyan already waved his hand dismissively. I knew that you were working together. Don't even try it. What I say about my daughter is what counts. Yu Zioyan directly turned and left, not even giving them a chance to reason with him. After so many years, Yu Zioyan had understood one principle, and that was to not talk reason with his women because he could not win. These two women of his were incredibly powerful. Knowing that he couldn't outreason them, he directly left. Now it was just the two of them in the palace. Yu Qingxuan's mother shook her head. This fellow's temper gets worse as his cultivation base grows. He's getting even more pig-headed. Big sister Hewixin, don't worry. Big brother Zioan will realize the truth sooner or later. It's just a matter of time. Let us be patient and give him a bit of time, consoled the other empress. Thank you. Langsin, I feel much better with you by my side. Yu Kingshuan's mother sighed. Yu Kingshuan's mother was named Jiang Hewixin. As for the other empress, her name was Zhu Langsin. They were the two empresses of the current dynasty of the Vermilion Bird Empire. King Shuen wanted me to give Long Chen this tablet and help him, so I can see that she truly loves that little fellow. Unfortunately, as her mother, I was unable to help her at all. Jiang Hewixin sighed with shame. Big sister Hewixin, to tell the truth, although Long Chen is handsome and doesn't appear ordinary, his tongue is glib and his character is a bit too arrogant. I'm not sure whether he's the right choice for her. Zhu Langsin hesitated, but still decided to speak her mind. In truth, she did not have a high opinion of Long Chen. As long as King Chuen likes him, I will support her. No one knows this better than a mother. Loving someone is like being struck with incurable poison. Was that not what happened to us? Just look at Yu Zioan's terrible temper. His looks are only average, but why did we end up falling for him? The two of them exchanged a look, suddenly recalling when Yu Zioan had called Long Chen's looks mediocre, and Long Chen had directly struck back. The two of them burst into laughter. Yu Zioan's furious, helpless expression back then almost made them cry with laughter. That's right. We should see what gift that child gave us. After that, the two of them curiously opened the cases. When the cases opened, their expressions became one of immense shock. In Read, Com Chapter 3958, Long Chen's betrothal gift within the cases were two mesmerizing reddish brown jugs, each about the size of a fist. Adorning the surface of these jugs was an intricately carved vermilion bird with seven ethereal clouds around it. Also, the image of the vermilion bird was so vivid as though it would fly off of the jug and into the clouds. Upon closer examination, millions of tiny runes actually formed a complete formation in each cloud emanating different colors. To their surprise, the seven clouds were seven formations with energy flowing within them. Actually, even an amateur could see that the jugs were amazing treasures just from the fact that such complicated formations were carved into them. Moreover, the auspicious clouds covering the vermilion bird possessed immense power. It was like they were their own world. Could this be? The legendary vermilion bird pear flower wine Jiang Hewixin was filled with shock as she looked at the jug in her hand. Seven auspicious clouds, with the vermilion bird's eyes being dark purple. The purple eye vermilion bird loves the divine flame pear flower, and it will only make its nest on top of it. It probably is real. Zhu Langsin looked closely at the carvings, also feeling shocked. If it is real, then this gift is too precious. Look at the seal. 
This wine is at least a million years old, and it might be one of a kind. Furthermore, the jug has a formation that will absorb the essence of heaven and earth to nourish the wine. Who knows what purity this wine has reached after a million years? Jiang Huixin rubbed the jug lightly. Long Chen had style when it came to spending money. It was because the divine flame pear flower was essentially extinct. Even if it did exist, every petal would be a priceless treasure, costing an astronomical amount of money. What kind of person would gather millions of such flower petals to make wine? Open it and look. There's no way I can calm myself without looking, urged Zhu Langson. However, Jiang Huixin hesitated. This was a priceless treasure. If it was real, then the formation would be ruined once opened. After that, the wine would need to be drunk within a few days or its power would gradually fade away. Although the two of them were empresses of the Vermilion Bird Empire, they had only ever heard of such a legendary wine and had never seen it before. Thus, the two of them were very curious. These two wine jugs had extraordinary origins. But once opened, they would be lost forever, akin to destroying a heavenly treasure. Big sister, open it. There are two jugs anyways. If they are real, there will still be one more. What if that little fellow was toying with us? You saw how strange he was. I feel like he really would be capable of anything, said Zhu Langson. If Long Chen really had given them two counterfeits thinking that they wouldn't open them, wouldn't it be embarrassing if one day someone opened one jug in front of everyone to find it empty or backed with some terrible wine? After hesitating for a long time, Jiang Huixin finally decided to slowly open the seal. As soon as the seal was touched, a fiery energy blew away her hand. The next moment, the wine jug floated in the air, a vast aura erupting out of it like a volcano, causing the entire palace to shake. Countless runes lit up on the walls, pillars, floor, and ceiling. The defensive formation was automatically triggered. Seeing this, the two of them exchanged a look. It seemed that this wine was not fake. The seal on the jug turned into two layers of runes flowing around it. When that happened, a brilliant bird cry rang out as if it had come from ancient times, accompanied by a burst of divine light. When the jug's runes all lit up, the two women could vaguely see the image of a vermilion bird raising its wings. Following that, a dense wine fragrance emerged, somehow causing the temperature to rapidly rise. In the end, the vermilion bird flew out of the jug and flew once around the hall before slowly fading away. As it disappeared, divine flame energy slowly fell. After that, the palace stopped shaking and the formations faded away. Everything returned to normal. However, now the hall was filled with the scent of wine. Just smelling it could intoxicate someone. Now when they looked at the jug, they saw that the vermilion bird on it was gone. As for the seven clouds, they were still there, but they were growing dim. Jiang Huixin and Zhu Langxin exchanged a look, seeing each other's shock. Jiang Huixin then took out two cups. She slowly poured the wine into the cups. At first, the wine was amber, but after being poured into the cup, it actually began to boil, looking like roiling lava. The powerful flame fluctuations shook their hearts. After that, they raised their cups and gulped the wine down in one go. When it passed through their throats, it was even more fiery than they had expected. In the mouth it was like honey, covering their tongue and teeth with its flavor. But when it entered the stomach, a rich heat rapidly spread throughout their bodies. The next moment, flames ignited throughout their bodies. Even when they were actually set ablaze by this wine, they slowly closed their eyes, immersing themselves within the flames. In their minds, the image of the vermilion bird soaring in the sky above a sea of pear flowers appeared. The two of them only opened their eyes after a long moment, unable to calm themselves. 
this vermilion bird pear flower wine is stronger than the legends even with our high cultivation bases our energy was further purified perhaps this can give us an opportunity to break through our current bottleneck this gift is too precious jiang hewickson looked at the tiny jug of wine with a complicated expression although it was only a tiny jug of wine the space inside could fit thousands of cups of wine moreover wine on this level was something priceless even if it was just a single drop that child has a heart zhu lanks inside she hadn't liked long chen before but after he had taken out such a priceless treasure she had no choice but to revise her judgment in truth long chen had no idea just how precious this gift was it was simply prepared by Syed Yuong for Long Chen to be given to the two empresses, and Long Chen only did as he said. If you accept other people's food, you can't say no to them. Let's go. We'll get Xiaoyan to try it as well. Jiang Huixin picked up the wine jug. If Big Brother Xiaoyan knows it is from Long Chen, he definitely won't drink it. Zhu Langsin shook her head. She understood his temper far too well. No problem. He doesn't need to know it was from Long Chen. We can use something else and pretend that it was Long Chen's gift, then give him the wine. Once he knows, it'll be too late. Jiang Huixin smiled. That's a good idea. Zhu Langsin laughed. The two of them left the palace just like that, laughing. Long Chen long chen had just left the palace and had not gone far under the lead of a eunuch when he heard someone calling to him he turned in delight to see yu kingshuan wearing an imperial dress she was like a noble fairy appearing before him wearing a sweet smile on her face as beautiful as a flower blooming kingshuan long chen hastily walked to her side however just as he reached out to grab her hands a large figure blocked his way. What mountain village did you come out of to not know the rules? You dare to show disrespect to the princess? Inread, Com Chapter 3959, starting from zero, Long Chen glanced at the imposing figure before him. The man appeared to be in his forties or fifties, towering over Long Chen by a full head. Despite his stature, he didn't appear elongated at all because of his solid, thick build. However, his pale and hairless face, as well as his loose skin, made his fatness look more apparent. From his shoulders down, his body was like that of an upside-down triangle. If he was a muscular man, that would be normal. However, it was extremely odd for someone with such a fat face. At this moment, this large eunuch and several other smaller eunuchs behind him were looking at Long Chen, coldly. Long Chen, this place is the palace. Yu King Shuan looked apologetic while saying this. Sadly, this was not somewhere else. The rules were even stricter here. I understand. There would only be eunuchs in the palace, said Long Chen. He smiled, but he very much disliked these strange people. Stay further back. Maintain a proper distance from the princess. The eunuch tried to push Long Chen, indicating for him to get away. However, before his hand reached Long Chen, a powerful force struck him, causing him to grunt and stagger back. The eunuch behind him cried out and tried to support him, only to end up being knocked down by him. Long Chen. Yu Kingshuan jumped in shock and hastily grabbed Long Chen. I am not someone that just anyone can touch. Next time you try to touch me, I'll relieve you of your arm. Long Chen glared at the large eunuch coldly. You. The eunuch was enraged. If you dare to say anything obscene, I'll take your head off instead. Oh, I have never made empty threats. Do you want to try me? Long Chen didn't like trouble, but he wasn't afraid of it. He didn't care if they didn't respect him, but if they were to dare to insult him, he wouldn't care about their status. The large eunuch was about to shout curses at Long Chen, but when he met Long Chen's gaze, it felt like an ancient beast had set 
its sights on him. In an instant, an intense sensation of death enveloped his heart. He was also an expert with sharp senses toward danger, thus, he could smell death at this moment. He was shocked. This was the Imperial Palace. Who dared to kill people here? However, he couldn't risk his life by uttering a curse or expressing his anger. As a result, his plump figure simply jiggled with rage, and his fists creaked from how hard he clenched them. You fool, this is the Imperial Palace. Do you not want your life any longer? demanded Yu Qingxuan. I refuse to believe that my father-in-law would kill me. Long Chen shrugged indifferently. Yu Qingxuan forgot her anger and blushed when Long Chen said this. She then rebuked him. How is your face so thick? You haven't passed the trials yet. Long Chen chortled, I won't fail at what I want to do. Trust me. Did you get the tablet? I asked my mom to give it to you. With it, you can directly register for the army. With your power, passing the trial will be very easy. After that, I, that tablet, I didn't get it. Long Chen's heart warmed when he learned that the tablet came from Yu Qingxuan. He didn't get it. Yu Qingxuan was surprised. Long Chen explained what had happened in the hall. Hearing this, Yu Qingxuan grew more and more worried. Without that tablet, it will be more complicated for you to fulfill the prerequisites. It'll take much longer. Foolish girl, isn't that a good thing? For you, I can always spend some time. I already said that for you I'm not afraid of anything, said Long Chen with a smile. Long Chen, why do you treat me so well? Asked Yu Qingxuan. She knew just how busy Long Chen was. He had many important matters to deal with. It was precisely because she knew this that she didn't want Long Chen to waste so much time and energy on her. Thus, she did her best to give him a head start. Because I like you, said Long Chen softly. Long Chen, I saw many things in Big Sister Meng Kai's eyes. Also, all your brothers looked shocked when they saw me. I'm very curious. Long Chen, are you hiding something from me? Yu Qingxuan looked at Long Chen. Long Chen shook his head. I will never hide anything from you. The only reason I haven't told you is because the time hasn't come yet. When the time comes, I will tell you everything. The reason Long Chen hadn't told Yu Qingxuan about her previous reincarnation was because he didn't want her to feel burdened. He didn't want their relationship to be based on the ties of her past life, but rather on genuine connection. He also desired to pursue her openly, giving her the joy and fortune that a woman like her deserved. After all, the pain of reincarnating a thousand times was unimaginable. Long Chen felt that this was the only way to repay her, even if only the slightest bit. Hearing this, Yu Qingxuan smiled sweetly, and the worry on her brows vanished. Without that tablet, you can only start from the lowest status and walk your way up step by step. I'm very worried about you, my dear. Your temper will cause you to run into a great deal of trouble. Long Chen's heart melted to hear Yu Qingxuan calling him dear. That was the most intimate thing that she had ever called him. Ha ha ha, I could go from a tiny person in the mortal world who was always bullied to where I am now. That wasn't because of luck. Wang Chen laughed. With just this one word from Yu Qingxuan, he was overflowing with confidence. Princess, your time for receiving visitors is up. You should go back and cultivate, reminded the large eunuch. So fast, Yu Qingxuan frowned. She had only said a few words to Long Chen. King Xuan, you can go. No need to worry about me. I've spent my entire time in the immortal world fighting and killing, so it's perfect for me to calm my heart and cultivate my character in the Vermilion Bird Empire. With this chance, I can raise my character and temperament to become the most outstanding son-in-law for the Vermilion Bird Empire. I will become someone possessing integrity and talent, 
wisdom and bravery, said Long Chen. Yu Qingxuan nodded. She still had many things to say to Long Chen, but the Vermilion Bird Empire had many rules that she had to abide by. With a heavy heart, she bade her farewell and departed, a tinge of sadness evident in her expression. The large eunuch glared at Long Chen before leaving along with her. As for the eunuch guiding Long Chen's way, he brought Long Chen out of the palace. Once Long Chen was out, he went to get a status plate for himself. That way, he would become an ordinary member of the Vermilion Bird Empire. Once he obtained the status plate, he went to the Huayan Trading Company. However, he had just passed through their gate when several figures in the distance coldly glanced at Long Chen and vanished. The Bloodkill Hall still refuses to give up. In Puda, are you going to personally come this time? Once they were gone, Long Chen turned back and looked at where they had vanished. A sinister smile then appeared on his face. In Reed, Com Chapter 3960, Evolving the Seven Star Battle Armor, those people didn't have high cultivation bases and their auras were weak. In fact, they looked just like ordinary commoners. However, no matter how they concealed themselves, they were unable to conceal their faith energy from Long Chen. After all, Long Chen had spent years fighting the Bloodkill Hall. Even with his eyes closed, he would be able to smell them as soon as they got close. Ever since Jai Wuming's death, Long Chen seemed to become the primary target of Imputa's wrath. It was because despite Long Chen's discreet arrival in the Vermilion Bird Empire, he was still found, which indicated that Imputa had mobilized all his resources to track him down. From this, it seemed highly probable that Imputa intended to personally confront Long Chen. However, Long Chen wasn't afraid of him since the Vermilion Bird Empire was filled with experts. For example, Long Chen knew that Yu Xiaoyan and the two empresses were three flower divine venerates. As for that ancient elder within the palace, there was no way to estimate his age, and Long Chen couldn't see through his cultivation base. He was unfathomable, so he was probably another terrifying expert. Furthermore, the grand formation in the capital was the most powerful formation Long Chen had ever encountered. If Imputa dared to manifest himself in the capital, it would be no different than sending himself to his death. Long Chen didn't mind if Imputa was just going to scout where he was. As long as Imputa didn't personally come, Long Chen wasn't afraid of anyone else. Inside the Huayan Trading Company, Long Chen directly exchanged 30 million silver. But these silver coins were no ordinary silver. They were vermilion bird starry fine silver, a kind of mithril that was only produced within the vermilion bird empire. This was an incredibly rare metal, but it was not actually valuable and only suitable to be a currency. If it was too precious then, the silver would leave the empire. After all, there was a limited quantity of this rare metal. Beneath the silver coins were copper coins that were also made with the Vermilion Bird Empire's special copper ores. They both had the totemic mark of the Vermilion Bird on them. Within the Vermilion Bird Empire, they would give off special fluctuations, so it was easy to tell the real ones from the fakes. There were also gold coins, but this gold currency couldn't be used by the commoners. Only members of the royal family, Hanlin scholars and above, or perhaps some high-level officials would be qualified to use them. Thus, commoners that somehow received gold coins would go to places set up to exchange them for silver and copper because they were not qualified to directly use the coins in Readcom. At this moment, Long Chen's status was nothing more than the lowest commoner within the Vermilion Bird Empire. The majority of people in this category typically relied on copper currency and rarely possessed silver. However, Long Chen was extremely wealthy. By giving a single devil crystal from an immemorial devil corpse to the Huayan Trading Company, he obtained a full 30 million silver. According to the Vermilion Bird Empire's pricing system, the value of a single silver coin 
was roughly equivalent to a hundred immortal king crystals. Therefore, thirty million silver coins would be valued at around three billion immortal king crystals. It is worth noting that even the princes and princesses of the empire received only thirty thousand silver coins per month. As a result, Long Chen could be considered a moneybag. With the help of the Huayan Trading Company, Long Chen directly registered as a martial artist for the Vermilion Bird Empire without even having to leave their gate. However, he would have to participate in a martial stage competition once every seven days to display his power and raise his rank. The martial artists were just like the scholars and were split into many ranks. But Long Chen couldn't be bothered to ask about those ranks. After registering for the martial art competition, he also registered for the scholar exams. In any case, he just needed to register. If he felt like it, he could go. But if he didn't feel like it, there was no one forcing him to participate. Long Chen was purely playing around. The next afternoon, there was a martial art competition and thanks to the connections of the Huayan Trading Company, Long Chen had an early match arranged for him. When Long Chen stepped onto the martial stage, he saw that his opponent was in the Divine Flame realm, dumbfounding him. His opponent was also stunned when he saw him. You're a fucking immortal king. What are you doing registering for this? Raged that person sullenly. I didn't have a fucking choice, all right. Long Chen was also speechless. How could this be blamed on him? I looked down on you. After saying that, this person directly fled. As the realm difference was too great, what was the point of fighting? They were fundamentally not on the same level. Most of the spectators were also divine flame cultivators. Hence, for an immortal king to appear here was like an adult entering a competition for children. This time, Long Chen was required to participate in three battles. Each battle was a week apart, and only upon winning all could he proceed to the next stage. Therefore, after emerging victorious this time, Long Chen had to wait for another seven days before his next challenge. Long Chen took advantage of this chance to increase his cultivation base. After all, Yu Qingxuan had reached the third heaven stage after leaving the three thousand worlds. As for himself, he was still in the initial immortal king realm. It went without saying that Yu Qingxuan's talent was amazing. The speed at which she advanced was incredible, so Long Chen had to put in some effort to keep up. Long Chen directly rented the most luxurious training room, which came at a price of a thousand silver per day. Despite the high cost, the room provided a wide array of supplementary formations. It was equipped with various facilities for activities such as cultivation, pill refinement, exchanging blows, and testing moves, all designed to assist and enhance the training experience. In these training rooms, even divine venerates had the freedom to unleash their full power. Furthermore, Due to the prohibition of fighting anywhere else in the capital, businesses such as training rooms thrived. These establishments offered a safe and controlled environment for individuals to engage in rigorous training and combat, catering to the needs of martial practitioners at all levels. The price difference between the lowest grade training rooms and the best was massive. As for this training room, it was packed with tools, from pill furnaces, training dummies, to forging tools. If Long Chen wished, he could even pay more money to get an expert to accompany him in training. A supreme heavenly genius could also be brought to help his training if given enough money. It was said that the princes and princesses often paid money to have someone accompany them in their training. However, finding training partners who could match their level was a challenge, as only peak experts were capable of meeting their requirements. Even so, countless experts still wished to become the training partners of the princes and princesses. Successfully obtaining such a position not only provided a chance to soar through the ranks by leveraging connections, but also came with additional benefits. Other than status and honor, 
they would also be granted an imperial salary and access to valuable imperial resources. It was a coveted opportunity that held both prestige and practical advantages. When Long Chen entered this training room, he decided to activate the pill refining formation. After that, the spiritual Kai in the room grew incredibly dense, and even the laws of heaven and earth were drawn into further aid in refining pills, increasing the chance of success. Long Chen had the demon moon furnace and the moon and star refining furnace get to work. Fortunately, the materials for the immortal king pills had long since been prepared. They just hadn't had the time to refine these pills until now. All the pills that the two had refined were essentially given to the Yuo family's disciples. In the Three Thousand Worlds, Long Chen had passed a mountain of pills to Qin Feng to give to the Yuo family. Now it was time to refine his own pills. Immortal King pills weren't that difficult to make. Long Chen showed them how to do it a few times, and the Demon Moon Furnace and the Moon and Star Refining Furnace directly got to work, working together with Hua Linger to refine the pills themselves. After leaving the matter of the pill refinement to them, Long Chen's mind sank into the primal chaos space, and his spiritual body set beneath the seven treasure-colored glass tree. Its divine light and fell, enveloping his soul, making Long Chen's mind clearer than ever. Seven large stars appeared in his empty mind. Behind them were 108,000 smaller stars forming a giant star diagram. It should be time to study my future path of the nine stars. Long Chen examined the stars as he had to find his own path. In an instant, the star diagram began to go through constant transformations, manifesting different diagrams. He had to find the most suitable star diagram within the countless possibilities, and that would be the design of his seven stars. On the third day that he was in seclusion, someone unexpectedly came to call him out of seclusion.